Welcome to your sanity safe space. Not a fucking issue. With your favorite YouTube podcast duo. You're fucking a white male. And a white female too. Saving the millennial generation in weekly installments. <laughs> Live from a castle tower and his mother's basement. This, this. is Beauty and the Beta. <laughs> and we will make America great again. You may have heard that some people down in the prep school wrote some racial slurs on some message boards. If you're outraged by those words, then you're in the right place. And if you can't treat someone from another race with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. A stunning update today on a story we covered in late September. After a month-long investigation, officials at the school now say it was all a hoax. <laughs> Well, the general says he stands by his comments. Regardless of the circumstances that those those words were written and they needed to be addressed. You can never overemphasize the need of a culture of dignity and respect. You are fake news. Very fake news. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, great show, terrific show, tremendous show. Frankly, the best. You can ask anyone about that. People often do. This is Beauty and the Beta. My name is Matt Christensen, flanked on my right, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Blonde. Welcome. Hello. First and foremost this evening, happy uh, belated Veterans Day to all those who served and to the rest of us who benefit. I know we have a lot of uh, military listeners and military family in the audience, so thank you for defending our right to make this show each and every week. And uh, what better way to celebrate military service members than by baselessly accusing a bunch of prospective military officers of racism <laughs> in what turns out to be an elaborate hoax? Oh my! Happy Veterans Day. Um, I several weeks in a row I have joked that I want hoax hate of the week to die. I want the bit to die. Yeah. I want or at least scale back. Like it's running to the joking? ground. Who is joking? I'm sick of this bit, but it just keeps happening. <laughs> It, it's been run into the ground. And so I, the new policy was, okay, I'm only going to talk about ones that are confirmed hoaxes. And then it comes back bigger, stronger, better than ever. So the story this week, as I'm sure many people have seen, is that uh, th this big case at the Air Force that got all this grandiose coverage on CNN and got this big speech by the Air Force Lieutenant General, who's the superintendent of this prep school at the Air Force Academy, all a big hoax. And there's basically egg for everybody's face. But even though it's proven to be a hoax, they still come up with this BS justification of, well, the message is still good, so there's no real problem here. You know, we, we said nice things, and we want to create a culture of inclusivity and happiness and togetherness. Oh, exhausting. So we'll, we'll go through the whole timeline, including... It, it, retrospectively, it's fun to look at the way CNN covers things like this. Because they tried to implicate Trump, too. They tried to blame Trump for this. Brooke Baldwin, mad at that guy for saying he loves boobs. Clay Travis, remember Brooke Baldwin? Yeah. Drunk with Don Lemon on, on uh, New Year's Eve, oh, Brooke Baldwin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she goes, she goes to the end of the earth to implicate Trump in this Air Force incident that was entirely a fake. They always do. Yeah. And then, you know, because this bit will never die. We even have bonus hoax hate. There's another one. <laughs> Another car at Kansas State University, racist messages all over it, proven to be a fake. So we'll we'll touch on that one, too. We didn't even make it a week. We instituted this policy last week. I know. <laughs> Not only are they proven hoaxes, but they're massive in national scale. So um, yeah. you, you can't get away from it. And they got so much media attention. I feel like we kind of are obligated. Exactly. <laughs> so I can't avoid this one. And uh, I, I don't think uh, by the time we go through it, this one is... Nice and juicy, just like the crack, uh, the guy who broke into the church and was smoking crack and going back and forth, stealing money and buying crack. It's, <laughs> it's rich and deep like that one. So it's worthy. Uh, before that, I want to touch on um, basically the aftermath of Sutherland Springs and the shooting. So when we were out live last Sunday, the shooting was only hours old. We were, hesi we were hesitating to talk about it because we didn't know exactly what was going on. Mm -hmm. Basically, no pretty much everything that went on here 
And uh, the response in the media, I think, has been a contrast of craziness and wholesomeness and sanity. And what I mean by that is you had things as crazy as the USA Today video saying you can attach a chainsaw bayonet to your to his gun he could have. Yeah, could when have. I was talking to my brother yesterday, he's like, that couldn't have been real. He didn't believe me. He was totally incredulous. I was like, yeah. I swear to God <laughs> <laughs> that they posted this. I linked it yeah. to the tweet. And you contrast things like that with the humility uh, of listening to the guy, one of the guys who fought off the shooter named yeah. Stephen Williford, uh, a hometown hero. Nothing but a hometown hero that guy is. And uh, you can listen to his interview. We'll play a little bit. His interview with Stephen Crowder, I think, is must-listen material. Yep. So we'll take a look uh, and listen to a little bit of that. Uh, what else is new this week? Seemingly everyone's a sexual predator. <laughs> if, uh, you know, Name a celebrity probably accused of being a sexual predator at this point. Um, you know, it's some, I, I joked previously, I'm, I'm waiting on your accusation uh, against me. So <laughs> think of an elaborate one. And uh, I'm just too lazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there, there are too many to count. So I, I definitely don't want to spend too much time going through who exactly is accused of what. But because there are so many now, you see people splitting into their teams and it's mostly condemn people on the other team, defend people on my team. And I think we all need to stop and sit and think about some objective criteria in terms of what we're going to allow people, what we're going to assume in cases where there is no proof, what we're going to allow people to get by on if there is no proof. And is it okay to jerk off in front of somebody if you ask? Right. Is that, that's Louis CK's situation? Yeah. I didn't look into it. I did. Cause I, a- I like him, you know, some, his stand up is some of my, my favorite. And this was always kind of a running joke in Hollywood. I'd heard this before. So that he did that, that he did that. So it's interesting to see a statement where he's like, yeah, totally. Oh, I didn't know he asked before doing it. That changes that everything. Pretty much changes it for me. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering why he admitted to it so easily. That must be Everybody's why it's already not that bad. Kind of known. Yeah. But we'll talk about, we'll get, we'll dig into that a little bit. Later. Yeah. Um, oh, there. So, <laughs> We did speak briefly a little bit or mentioned in the past. I can't remember if it was on Wednesday or Sunday. This Rand Paul incident where he was uh, attacked by his neighbor, assaulted and had five broken ribs. Yeah, six broken ribs. It was it six? Okay, so the, the motives remain somewhat unclear, although it is speculated and believed to be like a a landscaping dispute and a, a violation of homeowners association rules. GQ has this bit out this article out kind of reading that you know Rand Paul is an asshole neighbor and implying that he he deserved what happened to him and ripping libertarianism in a bizarre way we'll take a look at that a woman is fired over pictures of her flipping off Trump's motorcade um that went viral i think it's interesting suddenly a lot of the social justice left are starting to appreciate free speech and say hey Maybe she shouldn't be fired for having an opinion about something maybe we shouldn't try to bully people's employers wow. Wow, Maybe. what a revelation. That'd, that'd be nice if we get some introspection out of this. But I'm not going to be hopeful for that. You shouldn't be, yeah. And I don't know if you watched this. I put it to close the show. A viral video that shows the struggle of a woman trying to get French fries at Taco Bell. I didn't, but I, I read the show notes and I was like, I want to wait on this one. Really bizarre. Uh, but worry <laughs> not for her. Um, this mysteriously possib- possibly intoxicated lady. Nobody really knows. The object of her desire may be coming soon. And uh, so it will be all this and more. And of course, we will take your uh, Super Chat comments and questions in between topics, five bucks and up on the Sunday show, uh, to be read on the Sunday show, I should say, because we are no good low down money grabbers. We regret the policy, but we got to keep the Sunday show moving along. It will be all this and more in your favorite hour, two hours, whatever, however long it takes, who knows? Uh, thank you for liking the show on YouTube. Thank you for reviewing the show on iTunes. Thank you for keeping us afloat, helping us upgrade stuff on Patreon. Thank you for emailing, emailing us. That is beautyandthebeta at gmail.com. I always try to hustle through the read there, and then I just stumble over my own words, and it, I shouldn't have hurried so much anyway. Oh, and also there's audio platform stuff. You want to listen to the show, find it on an audio platform. I'm not reading them all. I'm tired of reading stuff. <laughs> Let's keep, let's keep it moving. A uh, couple shout outs. Uh, happy birthday to Matt in Houston. Ask Steven, for Matt. That Matt. Oh. Steven's Matt. Uh, so I, I maybe they're listening live now. I think they might be. So thank you both for supporting the show and happy birthday. Uh, we had some su- support for the show before we went live from listener Jeff. So thank you, Jeff, for supporting the show. And we also have a little bit of artwork 
to get to. We got this. I got this during the week. Uh, are you familiar with the Virgin versus Chad memes? Yeah. I think this might be the only context in which I am on the Chad side of the Virgin <laughs> versus Chad memes. <laughs> but because we were speaking about getting um, internet threats, basically, people saying, I'm going to come to your house and kill you. I am now the Chad keyboard warrior. I'm the Chad of getting internet threats. Nice. <laughs> so whereas the Virgin doxing victim won't criticize unknown doxers out of fear and hides his first name, even though it's, it's really common. Uh, and thinks revealing the county, no, the country someone lives in counts as doxing. I am arms <laughs> to the teeth. I play with guns on camera. When someone sends me a death threat, I send him my address. He does. I, he does. And I make light of deadly serious situations constantly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so right. that is yeah. that is from uh, Twitter Space Pirate 369. Thank you for that. Yeah, one uh, time I messaged Matt frantically. I'm like, oh my God, your address, it's all over Discord. What am I going to do? And he's like, I don't give a shit. And he just immediately dropped it, didn't think about it again. He's like, I got a bunch of guns here. My address is already published. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from Mr. Troll. This is me as Slim Chatelet. His lines are <laughs> shitty, rap is weak, he's breathing heavy. There's vomit in it, in my mouth already. Never forget he. Matt Skag 3 Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Slim Chatelet, thank you, Mr. Troll. And this one, this one is from um, Commissar uh, Commissar. I, for, I forgot to say that Commissar Bear. Commissar. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I don't know what this is. Is this one of these memes the kids know that I don't know? I don't know. I mean, I just assume that they kind of made this, that they kind of shopped this uh, pig burka on me. They called oh, it a porka. Oh. <laughs> But then why am I in like, am I in like an America burqa? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Are we in anti-Islamic burqas? Is that what this is? I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I can get with that. <laughs> and the last thing I have to share, you know, it's been kind of, um, Trump has been on this Asia trip and it's been kind of boring, you know, like he's not, not here. Not Melania's he's, outfits. They've been well, very exciting. Yeah, I guess what I mean is there's not a lot of fights picked, although there was one with an NBC <laughs> reporter kind of that we'll get to. <clears throat> and so you know there's not a lot of conflict but he's he's out he's out in asia he gets on twitter he's in vietnam specifically and he tweets this out people were talking about this why would kim uh, kim yong un kim jong un i know people are have strong opinions about that i guess i'm supposed to say kim jong un so go with kim jong un why would kim jong un insult me by calling me old when i would never call him short and fat oh well i try so hard to be his friend <laughs> And maybe someday that will happen. 224,000 retweets on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good for him. It's, uh, yeah, this is our president. It's, uh... <laughs> Whatever. People complain about having a, a schoolyard bully for a president, but that's exactly what Kim Jong-un is. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, think, I think the laughs are, are worth it in this case. Until we have nuclear war, and then I'll say, ah. Probably not worth it. But... <laughs> on, on the tweets. Um, okay. Well, there's a lot to get to in the Sutherland Springs aftermath stuff here. You want to hop into it? Should we take a break? Um, we should probably get to some super chats really quick. Okay. Uh, cause we got some, we got some big ones. Oh boy. Oh, sorry. Um, actually let's hop into it because this page is not loading. Okay. Oh, actually we're, we're okay. We're okay. Um, let's see. Josh G. Marshall said, what a fine night to spend with Matt and Blonde. Good evening, you two. Thank you very much. Glad you're here. Um, Redicus said, love the false start. How many yards? Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so, you know, it wasn't actually a false start. We were taping a thank you for a patron, and I accidentally hit uh, start stream instead of just start recording locally. So we went live like 15 minutes before the show accidentally for, I thought it was only a few seconds, but then it said it was a minute. So yeah. Yeah. So people the got potential to see for disaster there. He's like, oh, they were recording us for a minute. I was like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> I just have to be careful with my buttons. Oh, boy. Thanks, Redicus. Um, A big donation from Jonathan Edwards. Blonde, uh, I YouTubed O2 A Dying Race, and it made me think of you. Oh, that's so depressing. Are you really quitting the show? What the fuck? Uh, no, no, no. Just uh, next summer, I'm planning on getting pregnant, and I'm probably going to shut chan the channel down then which I posted on Twitter. I just wanted to have record that, you know, whatever happens next summer, I was planning on quitting anyway. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the donation. And um, to be clear, so he understands. I mean, your intent, as I understood, was you want to stay on the podcast. I you do. Just, it's probably yeah. my channel. And I think I might just leave it up and like do one video a month or something and just kind of keep a moderate presence around. But uh, just not, I'm not going to be doing it full time this, this upcoming summer. 
Um, Laura M said, first time donor, nothing really except to say I love you both. Oh, thank you so much. Thank Y'all you. make my Sunday evenings great. Keep up the great work. Thank oh, you, Laura. Very kind of you. Thanks. Christian, <clears throat> Christian R, watching from overseas on my deployment, FYI, I'm in the Air Force, and though the racist story was pretty suspicious considering the, the Air Force is pretty PC. Yeah, we, we also found it suspicious. <laughs> yeah, it was a red flag right away, and but now, God, well, I'll save it because I don't... I just, I don't like this Lieutenant General's statements at all. It's really pissed me off. So we'll, yeah. we'll talk about what he had to say. Yep. Um, then we have Evan Thompson. Matt, I need to send you an email about the gay wedding baker and gay coffee shop owner. I think you got it wrong in some parts. I would call Wednesday, but I can't. Okay. Uh, send it yeah, to you. Yeah, you can send me an email. Send it to Matt Christensen, though, instead of the um, Beauty and the Beta email. Then we have tendies for breakfast. Question for each of you. Matt, I'm planning a trip to Yellowstone. When should I plan to go? Generally uh, in the summer. So between, I mean, it, it depends uh, if you're going to get crowds in the summer. So between Labor Day or between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day, you're going to get a lot of crowds, but that's when it's all open. If you go in the winter, you're going to have to go by snow coach, snowmobile. Basically all the roads are shut down in the winter. Um, winter is very cool though. If you want to plan it that way, it's just, you're going to freeze and it's going to be really snowy and, um, and the bears are all going to be hibernating of course. Um, and but blunt- if you want to travel by car, go in the summer. That's all, That's what I would say. Yeah, it's probably worth it. You can do way more, even though there are more people. Um, and then he also said, blonde shit test video in the works. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I just don't want to, I don't, I don't want the backlash, but, but one day, one day. So the MGTOW, the fear of the MGTOW. Fear of the MGTOW, yeah. Um, David Alexander said, love you too. The only show I would donate to. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, and then our resident faggot, Gabriel Lopez. Andy is still a <laughs> faggot. Hope you guys don't get on endless vacations when you're rich enough from this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I, 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 I mean, I have a passion for doing this. I enjoy putting together this show. I don't, it's not, uh, you know, believe it or not, this is not a get rich quick scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think people are under the impression that everybody makes a lot more money in this than they actually yeah. do. I mean, I'm very thankful to have what we do and I'm thankful that we've been able to build something out of this, but I didn't have a a rich person's job before and I took a significant pay cut to do what I do, but I love doing this. I don't do it for that. I do it because I love doing this show. So thank Um, you, Gabriel. Thank you very much. And then Redicus said, Louis CK is a serial masturbator. You don't (laughs) say, well, aren't all men serial masturbators? He's a serial public masturbator. That's yeah, I guess that's the distinction. <laughs> uh, why just sided... men? Why, 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 not, why not women? Oh, yeah. I guess that didn't even occur to me. It's Jeez. my internalized sexism. Yeah, internalized <laughs> feminism. I know. Uh, three-sided coin, stopping in to drop off your weekly socialist allowance. Maybe one day <laughs> I'll make the Colin show. Thank you or, for that. Or send us an email, although I guess it's harder to have a actual exchange by email. Yep. Uh, Downside said, hey, Matt, thoughts on getting a visor and your thoughts on the failings of the national instant background check system being worse than just the AF? Uh, visor? What do you... Uh, I don't I don't know exactly what... I don't know. Do you wanna, we should pop this into... Um, sure. That, yeah, that might be a good question to save on... Uh, to save for Wednesday. Uh, I don't know that the background check system... We don't know exactly what happened with Devin Kelly, who we'll talk about in a minute. We're not going to go into the... To, whether he should have been able to get a gun or not, but there's some legal ambiguity there. And we're going to have to wait to see what the air force investigation actually reveals to figure out where the mistake lies and potentially how we can correct it. So I'm not prepared to say that it's a failure of the background check system, because as far as we understand the material that was supposed to be reported to the background check system wasn't, and we don't know whose fault it was that that didn't get in. Um, then we have Steven Suarez. Uh, of course, we're watching Matt live. Matt says, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Steven. Steven. Um, and then last one for right now, a big donation from Donna Brazil. They don't <laughs> think that how it be, but it do, but it do. <laughs> yeah. Spoken like a true party chairwoman. <laughs> I don't know. I still find her just irresistibly likable. I know she fucked up, <laughs> but I just, I find her so likable. I, I don't know. Yeah. And you question my tastes and people sometimes. I'm my not God. saying I trust her, but I mean, <laughs> she's, she's a pretty charismatic woman. And I like that at least she's one of the first people that's trying to get ahead of the DNC going. Down, yeah. Right. All my critics can go to hell, quote Donna Brazil. That's a very Blondian <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> it was something like that. That's a paraphrase. Like it's a not an exact in the night quote. trying to steal the. Yeah. Uh, but we're good for right now. Which... Okay. So let's, I'll just hop into the shooting stuff here. Um, as I mentioned, I, I, I know you spoke about gun control in your video this week. I spoke about this 
weird kind of legal limbo that this case exists in, in terms of how he acquired his weapon. So if those questions interest you, definitely check out our individual channels and there's discussion of that. We're just going to talk about like some of the media, the really silly media reaction, and then some of the really quality, uh, I don't know, I'd call it a media reaction, but just the guy who fought off the shooter or fought the shooter appearing on Steven Crowder's show, which was a fantastic interview. The big meme of the week was... <laughs> Uh, you had mentioned that your brother couldn't believe this. I thought the same thing when I saw it, but USA Today idiotically tweeting this video that says, not that the shooter did have this. It is basically, here's the rifle the shooter used, a Ruger uh, AR-556, standard semi-automatic rifle, the, functionally the same as the AR-15 boogeyman that they, that they put out there. And they said, here are some attachments that he had. Apparently he had some attachments on his weapon now here are some attachments that he could have had is the premise for this video that they put out and so it's possible modifications what we know about the ruger ar556 so the I base like model music too. yeah butt stock front sight rear sight 30 round mag a trigger a, the base, <laughs> the base model has a trigger by the way this, this firearm comes out of the box with a trigger on it. Possible modifications. This is where it gets silly. Now, this is what's interesting, too, is they say he used a Ruger AR-556. Possible modifications for that firearm. Well, possible modifications for any yeah, firearm. Yeah, why wouldn't they just show a grenade and be like, it's also possible he could have used a grenade if he wanted to. It's like it's equally it's, as unlikely as adding these insane <laughs> attachments to this gun. Yeah, and it, it starts off... Uh, it was, We'll get to the one that everyone's talking about. So 100, 100 round drum mag, underbarrel shotgun, <laughs> a trigger crank, a chainsaw <laughs> bayonet. Chainsaw bayonet. This is what people are talking about. Oh my. Uh, the only place I'd heard of this previously is in Gears of War, which is not a video game I really liked, but you could chainsaw people in Gears of War. Now, this is... <laughs> you could attach a chainsaw to anything. Like if I want to make my car an assault car, I'll put in a chainsaw on the grill and drive it into people. I could do that. But, but then if your intent was to go into a church and chainsaw people, it would just be better to use a chainsaw. And yeah. so what is the conclusion USA Today? Do we need stringent chainsaw regulation? And after the Colin show, I did look it up and the average chainsaw is around like eight pounds. That might even be on the, on the lighter side. Well, that's so pretty lightweight. What yeah, are you I mean, you're going to put an eight pound chainsaw at the end of this gun? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, it, it really uh, it counters the recoil of the weapon, you know, so it's a real it's a good counterbalance. Not only can you saw off limbs, but, you know, it, it keeps your aim on target. Uh, OK, then this, of course, birthed many, many memes. Uh, so some good ones that I liked. Uh, oh, I forgot. They also had to respond to clarify. The video shows both the shooter's modifications as well as other possible modifications. The shooter did not use a chainsaw <laughs> bayonet. They had to issue Aww. a clarification. The shooter did not use a chainsaw bayonet. This is a serious national, allegedly credible, professional journalism outlet. But let's speculate wildly about what could have happened. What he could attach. Okay. Now here's some other things he could have attached, of course, that are humorous in nature, but no more absurd than the chainsaw bayonet, really. So you got your chainsaw bayonet. What else? A mini AR-15. <laughs> mini AR-15 with a chainsaw on it. A selfie stick. I like this one, the Antifa pistol grip. <laughs> Is that a dildo? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the Antifa pistol grip. And then, of course, the deadliest of them all. By far the scariest attachment for the Ruger AR-556. White babies. Dun, 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 dun. dun. <laughs> the worst. The worst. We need those regulated. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and then this was my favorite. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, my favorite was <laughs> the Home Depot truck of peace. <laughs> oh, boy. <attachment. laughs> you know, you stick a chainsaw on the grill of the truck, and then there you go. Uh, and then we did get this too from listener. Uh, I know it's supposed to be, oh God, I don't even know how you say it. How do you, how did, how do Jewish people say the CH Chaya? It's supposed to be Chaya, but I'm going with Chaya. So sorry, <laughs> Chaya. Uh, but Chaya's husband, uh, emailed me or she emailed me 
what she did with her husband's rifle. So you've got your chainsaw attachment, your hammer stock. You look closely on the, the scope of the rifle there. There's actually a, a food processor blade. And then it's got <laughs> dual snack magazines from Nature Valley. So, th- so if you're out there, you really need food during your, um, your mass killing. This would be a, a very, very good excellent. weapon choice. <laughs> so thank you, Chaya. Chaya. Let me know how I do. Sorry, sorry about the pronunciation. It's like ha- Hanukkah. Or I don't know how you're supposed to say it. Man, you are fucking this up big time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's uh, Whatever. Sorry. I do what I can. Um, okay. So, yeah. So so that's, uh, that. I mean, the memes go on and on and on. There were like thousands of these. There were lightsabers. There were, uh, I don't know, nuclear bombs attached to this thing. Sharks. Sharks. The, the memes go on and on and on, but it's... Um, on a serious note, what is it indicative of? It's indicative of a media that one has no concept of the weapons on which they're reporting. Um, and two just wants to stoke fear in you uh, about these things. In my video, I said that they were trying to exploit your every man's lack of knowledge about firearms. I mean, I think that your average person probably didn't watch this though. And think that those were reasonable. Your average person is probably like, are they for real? Right? I don't know. I mean, I, I would say that both you and I are like casually familiar with firearms. I wouldn't say either of us are experts, um, but as someone who has handled a firearm before, <laughs> as someone with friends who are much more enthusiastic about them than I am, that's why when we talked, when we spoke to um, uh, Big Red Doggy on on Wednesday on the show, I asked him, "Like, you know a lot more about guns. Is this a thing that I, that people have that I've never seen before? Is that, that... apparently not?" Uh, this is, I, I guess I'd like to be a fly on the wall in that meeting. Did some intern think of this and they just did so, Yeah. I mean, they're like, should we do it, guys? Should we do it? <laughs> and then someone in the graphics department had to put it together and do this whole animation. This had to pass through several hands. Uh, so it's entirely silly. But that at least it, at least it um, gave birth to a lot of uh, excellent memes this week. It was really fun to watch those come in. When I ser- first saw the truck of peace attachment, I laughed really hard out loud and thought, that's the one for me. That's the one that takes the cake. Who knew? That just happened. <laughs> it was like two weeks ago. Okay. Did you, um, did you see this clip of this NBC reporter trying to pin Trump down on gun control as a result of this uh, event? I, the, she, so. I forget which Asian country he was in. It looks like South Korea based on the flags here. Uh, but she gets up and she does this grandstanding question to Trump about um, well, you want to you want to give extreme vetting to people coming into the country. Why don't you want to do extreme vetting for guns and for and Trump's response was surprisingly on point for a guy who, when he's not on script, can kind of get weird. I think we all would acknowledge <laughs> that this was this was pretty good. This was a pretty good response. So we got um, it starts with crazy. You talked about wanting here. to put extreme vetting on people trying to come into the United ah. States. But I wonder if you would consider extreme vetting for people trying to buy a gun. You know, you're bringing up a situation that probably shouldn't be discussed too much right now. We could let a little time go by, but it's okay if you feel that that's an appropriate question, even though we're the heart of South Korea. I will certainly answer your question. If you did what you're suggesting, there would have been no difference three days ago. And you might not have had that very brave person who happened to have a gun or a rifle in his truck go out and shoot him and hit him and neutralize him. I can only say this, if he didn't have a gun, instead of having 26 dead, he would have had hundreds more dead. So that's the way I feel about it. And are you not going to help? And are you considering any kind of gun control policy going forward? When you look at the, the city with the strongest gun laws in our nation is Chicago. Mm -hmm. And Chicago is a disaster. It's a total disaster. Just remember, if this man didn't have a gun or a rifle, you'd be talking about a much worse situation in the great state of Texas. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, right on, right on. Every once in a while, he doesn't cringe me out and he just like says exactly what needs to be said. And that was such a smackdown for her. If I were that young journalist, I would go home and cry. Yeah, uh, I got a smackdown from the president of the United States today. <laughs> he was surprisingly concise and well spoken on it, and I appreciated that. The and only what thing an I, inappropriate time for her to ask that. It was kind of weird. Yeah, uh, the only the only thing I wish he would have touched on that he didn't. Although I'm not going to criticize him too much, all things considered, I thought his response was right on point. 
But it'd be nice if someone would just say to that reporter, hey, idiot, one is a constitutional right of U.S. citizens and the other is not a right. There is no right for foreign nationals to come to this country. So obviously we're going to screen them before they get in here. The other is a constitutional right for U.S. citizens. So we're yeah. specifically saying hands off because it's a constitutional right. You don't, you don't treat these things as the same thing because they're not the same thing. Yeah, but you know, you saw that clip of that college student saying like, oh, "I don't, I don't really care about the Constitution." I, yeah, I don't, well, I don't even know if that's if that's an argument for these people anymore because yeah. they're like, "Just fix the Constitution, well, just that, fix." Yeah, and that's that's how I feel too. Is you can't just uh, use the Constitution as a crutch anymore and say, "Well, that's that's the governing legal document of ours." You right. got to have you got to have that philosophical basis ironed out in your head and to explain it. And I want to get to that in a moment because I think. Listening to Stephen Williford, the guy who shot him, illustrates very concisely why you want to maintain yeah. the Second Amendment as a value. Before we get to that, I just wanted to share this Politico cartoon. Did you see this? Click that link in the, I forgot to put the picture in the notes, but there's a Politico link oh, under the gun that. picture. Uh, Politico <laughs> shares their cartoons on Twitter this week. Uh, this is one of Politico's cartoons. It is oh. Al Qaeda and ISIS kneeling before a an NRA guy with blood dripping from his hands, and they're saying we're not worthy because they're in awe of the blood on his hands. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> I don't understand. Stephen Williford, who we're about we're about to hear from, is an NRA instructor. The guy who at least helped to stop this, is an NRA instructor. It doesn't appear that the NRA is opposed to any law that would have stopped Devin Kelly, our shooter in this case. In fact, the reason Kelly got a gun is because this case exists in this w very bizarre kind of ambiguous point between military law and federal law. Remember, the NRA was out in favor of banning bump stocks after Las Vegas. And just because I, I, I don't understand how you say they're terrorists, because you defend ag against laws that would that would make it harder for citizens to acquire firearms. That you mean that means you're responsible for people who use firearms for bad purposes. I mean, seemingly this is this is kind of nonsensical in light of recent events. I don't get it. I mean, you, yeah. Would you say that Home Depot enabled the truck the truck attack in Manhattan? No. Like, does Home Depot have blood on their hands? Because it seems to me Home Depot didn't stop it. The NRA didn't stop these shootings. In fact, they made it easier. I just, I don't understand. Why don't we blame the attacker? Like, if the terrorists are in awe of Devin Kelly, okay, Devin Kelly seems like a piece of crap and he's dead. If the terrorists are in awe of Stephen Paddock, the shooter in Las Vegas, yeah, also a piece of crap who's dead. <laughs> but they're people using tools. Uh... I don't understand. I don't get it. This is kind of upsetting. Who's the yeah. cartoonist? Mike Luckovich? Is that what this is? Something like that. Oof. Mm. This is not creative or inspiring in any way. Political cartoons, you know, they used to be multifaceted. Yeah, this is... Uh, All the it's... Politico's worthless. This guy went full retard on this, though. Mike Luckovich, is that... Something like that. The theme of all of these uh, reactions is it's an emphasis on an evil man in Devin Kelly. And he is an evil man. They're right about that. He's dead now. And he had a scary gun, scary Ruger AR-556. But there's not a lot of emphasis. I'm not going to say they've ignored it entirely because I've seen him appearing here and there. But there's still not a lot of emphasis on a good man with functionally the same gun that Kelly had. The much maligned AR-15, the tool, the tool of every white male American terrorist, the AR-15. So... I know Stephen Williford has made a few media appearances here and there, but I've not seen anything at the length that he appears on Stephen Crowder's channel. Do you know where else minutes. he appeared? I've, I've actually only seen the Crowder interview. Did I, he appear on NBC or any of the leftist media outlets? I, I don't know if he himself has appeared, but I know they've done stories about him. In the Crowder interview, he did say that leftist media outlets were showing up at his home and harassing him at his home, putting cards hmm. underneath his front door. He couldn't even leave the house. Well, I mean... Maybe maybe they were trying to talk to him in good faith. I don't know. Don't show I, I don't up at wanna... his house after he just stopped a mass shooting. Everybody yeah. should have the courtesy to leave this guy alone and let him come to them. All Journalists I'm saying are is, snakes. 
I don't want to accuse them of ignoring or maligning him without evidence that they're doing that. That's all I'm trying to stop short of saying. But what I will say is that if there's one thing that should be emphasized that's not getting emphasized is what he had to say. And what he had to say on Crowder was pretty incredible. It's a piece of American history that I think people should listen to. Uh, and I know you had sent it to me first and said, you know, it's basically must listen material. And I thought, All right, yeah, I'll, I'll Mara Jane just said, I cried during his interview. That's what I said when I sent it to Matt too. I'm like, this may be so emotional. And then I <laughs> cried again when I watched it today. <laughs> yeah. So here's what he had to say. So this is Stephen Williford, the guy who her, he lives across from the church. He shot at Devin Kelly and hit him before Devin Kelly fled. And then he pursued Devin Kelly with another good Samaritan. Uh, and eventually Devin Kelly crashed his car and shot himself is what happened. But this is what he had to say. Every time I heard a shot, I was thinking that was assigned to someone else. That shot was assigned. He was shooting at another person every time I heard a shot fire. It's the time of the year that I'm growing my Santa beard because I go on a motorcycle ride with the Baptist church where we deliver toys for boys and girls. I'm a Christian Aww. and I believe I believe at that point and maybe uh, this sounds a little off just some of your visit their viewers that aren't Christians. I believe the Holy Spirit was on me because I had the presence of mind to look at what was going on. And as we exchanged fire, I noticed that the side was one of those tactical vests that Velcros across. Kevlar in the front, Kevlar in the back, nothing in the side. I had a AR-15 with an EOTech on it. I shot between the two Kevlar plates. You gotta understand Sutherland Springs is a small, small town. We walk outside and we see our neighbors, the neighbors that knew our parents and our grandparents, and we stare up, we can still see the stars at night. That's Sutherland Springs. One way or the other, someone's life was gonna be in danger. And yeah, it was mine. Police would have showed up. Yeah, and they probably were better trained and whatever, but I was there when it happened I, I was there when nobody else was there hmm. what a good american grace Are you tearing pressure. up again i can't help it dude wow. it's like every every time i see it it's like um that's just who i want to who i want to live next to who i want yeah. to be my neighbor my friend that's what i want my community to be like exactly exactly and so to the reactionary we need this law that law every law under the sun for gun control crowd if you think that you can ban your way out of this problem, if that is your philosophical worldview, my approach on, on this issue is this. If you accept the premise that Devin Kellys exist, that there are evil people like De Devin Kelly, that maybe he disregarded the law in this case, maybe he was just lucky, but either way he got the gun. Let's say he had disregarded the law entirely. Mm -hmm. He got the gun, he did what he did. No basic respect for humanity, no basic love for humanity, just an evil, terrible person. If you accept that that exists in this world and it will try to harm you and your family and your community, then you want to be surrounded by Stephen Williford's and you want them armed. Yep. And he said uh, at some point during that interview, like a handgun would have been worthless to me. He's yeah. like, I couldn't have been done. I could not have made that shot between his Kevlar plates without the AR-15. Would have been a lot tougher for yep. sure. The average school shooting lasts 12 and a half minutes. And in those instances, the average police response time is 18 minutes. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, generally speaking, we all, I'm not saying no laws. I think we all want to do what we can to try to keep guns out of the hands of crazies. And we do, generally speaking. And of course, we want to do what we can to strengthen our police forces, make sure they're well-funded, make sure they're well-organized, make sure their response time is as fast as can be. But there is no gun control that will stop every Kelly and there is no police force that's going to respond as fast as right. every Stephen Williford is. So ultimately, all we have for sure to take care of ourselves and our families and our communities is ourselves and our ability to defend ourselves with firearms. Exactly. I mean, think of being in an active shooter situation in a school. Um, if, if nobody is armed, the only thing you can do is hide until it's over. That's 100% of your course of action. That's it. Just, just think of the terror, too. I mean, we've talked about... Uh, like the terror of the unarmed British police guy at, at Westminster or whatever. You know, when, yeah. when the Muslim car driver drives his car and then gets out with a huge machete uh -uh. and is coming to hack you up. Sorry, you're frozen. You still there? 
Ah, oh, are you going to drop out as soon as I start talking? <laughs> we'll see if we can get her back. Um, anyway, well, that's kind of an interesting transition point between topics. That's kind of an abrupt ending. So maybe I can hop into Super Chat while we try to get Blonde back. Let's see what's going on in there. Sorry for the uh, hiccup, guys. Oh, boy. I don't know where she left off either. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, so Frank Underwood said, surely there's a lot of sexual depravity in Hollywood, or sure there is. But I wonder what the percentage of false accusations are, because now there uh, are no risk for the crazy mattress girl types to pile on. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Like, uh, without without certain proof of what's going on here, how much are we how much are we supposed to listen and believe, I suppose? And do we listen and believe to everybody, or do we listen and believe to just our side? I don't know if Blonde got booted off the internet entirely. I'm kind of getting worried that she hasn't hopped back in yet. I don't what know happened? That oh, now you're back. Okay. It still has my icon there. Yeah, I mean, you must have just, I don't know, you froze on me and but oh, now you're good back. good lord. I don't know what's going on. My internet connection is fine. Sorry, guys. God, we were getting, it sucked too because we were getting into, you know, pretty serious territory and then it's like, oh. Well, I was just describing to you the terror of being attacked by an Islamic attacker when you're unarmed. Or the terror um, of... It is my video coming through though, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you still hear me all right or is my audio dipped out? No, this is fine. It's just it has three people in the hangout right now and another one is just the second me. No, you're fine. <laughs> all right. I guess it's fine. Although, yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, but it's fine. Okay. I'll leave it for now. It Sorry, guys. Fine. Um. Yeah, although... Hold on. I'm going to adjust something. So I, I, we don't... It sucks that we got that part of the show interrupted because yeah. I wanted to talk about that stuff more. But I think we've made our point. Like, it, it's not as simple as ban your way to prosperity here. And you get too ban happy, you make it, You create a lot of burdens for the Stephen Willifords of the world to protect your community. And like you said, I want that guy as my neighbor. Yeah. I want that guy watching out for, for my future wife and kids. Exactly. And me. Yep. That's what I want. Yep. And there would be just the communities would be better if they were filled with people like that. There would be more cohesion. I'd be able to leave my door unlocked. You know, hmm. that's just what I want. That's what I want when I moved to Idaho. People like Stephen Wilford all in my neighborhood. I got I hopped into Super Chat real briefly in your absence. So I suppose we should probably just move on with that. Oh, good. Uh, where what was the last I, one? I, I got Frank Underwood's red. You got Frank Underwood's right. Um, and then Gouda says, gave five stars on iTunes and called Matt a cock. Thank you for that. <laughs> Appreciate um, the iTunes review. Brian A said, uh, getting pregnant, congrats on having sex. And congrats <laughs> to you, maybe. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Yoda Economics, when you get the chance, can you touch on Blair White getting attacked in Hollywood last night? It would be a hate crime under any other circumstances. I just watched it. Holy shit. Those I people are it. insane. All so she's doing is walking around wearing her hat. She's not being confrontational. She just kind of stumbles upon this anti-Trump protest. And then this fat guy wearing a pussy hat, like pulls her hat off. And then she leans down to get it. And he smashes her, her hand with his boot. He like stomps Whoa. on her hand. Yeah. And it ripped off her, one of her nails. Jeez. And then when she's talking about it, somebody walks by and throws a drink in her face, like a bunch of clear alcohol. And it's just like Jesus all over. Christ. Yeah, for a second, you can tell that she thought that she got maybe acid thrown on her. So yeah. She's freaking out. She's like, it's burning, it's burning. And then they smell it and everything. Yeah, it's just booze. Oh, my God. It, Thank God. You know, only in – this is so horseshoe that now if a tranny's conservative, it's okay to, like, beat on her. It's what? <laughs> yeah, What exactly. world am I in? What timeline is this? Yeah. Um, Archer Warhound said, first time I've actually been able to watch y'all live. So glad I could finally catch the show live. Yeah, we're not having any problems tonight. We didn't start streaming the show 10 minutes before we were supposed to go live. And I didn't just lose the stream for a minute. Sorry. Yeah, that was um, weird. Anna said, you guys are honestly my favorite podcast at this point. Keep it up. Also, Blonde, has anyone ever oh, told you you look like Debbie Harry? Oh, thank you. It's my favorite celebrity lookalike compliment. So I appreciate mm. that. Um, Ryan Johnson, thoughts on Tom DeLonge's To the Stars Academy of Arts and Science? And what's your guys' favorite Blink-182 song? I don't know the answer to either of those questions. Uh, so you know who Tom DeLonge is? Mm -hmm. The co-frontman of Blink-182 with Mark Hoppus, who I will weirdly mention in the show later tonight. Mark Hoppus has a, a connection 
or at least to a topic that we'll discuss. So I guess it's a Blink-182 night. I will not pick a, well, maybe I will. I My favorite album, at least, is probably not a popular one, but I really like Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. It's probably my favorite Blink-182 album. Uh, and I honestly, my favorite song might be Stay Together for the Kids. And it's an uncharacteristically serious Blink song that's about divorce and, you know, households falling apart and stuff. But I love the guitar riff. I love the song. I think it's fantastic. So... Well, didn't they do like Enema of the State? That was probably their biggest hit album with the with the, the sexy nurse know. lady and the yeah. glove. Yeah. Yeah. And it had all the the songs like uh, What's My Age Again and yeah. like I was all their never big, a big hits. Fan, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was never a huge fan. I did see them with Weezer once when I was in college. That was pretty cool. That is the most millennial thing I've ever heard. In my life. <laughs> I saw Blink One Eighty Two with Weezer. And, and not only that, but when Weezer left the stage. They uh, they had Keyboard Cat play them off like on the big screen. <laughs> so it was definitely like totally millennial experience. Keyboard oh, Cat boy. cameo and everything. Uh, Reddick has said, Gears of War, Zombie Apocalypse War. When is, chainsaw not, when is a chainsaw not useful? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Go on. Um, Three-Sided Coin, our resident socialist. Possible modifications for a broom. Box cutter blades regulate assault brooms. I know, right? <laughs> uh, Wendy Jensen yeah. said, what are your thoughts on the NAACP Cali trying to get rid of the national anthem? I live in Cali and hate it. I love you guys. Keep up the good work. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that, but if you Never have a story, I. send me a link. I'll check yeah, it out. Send that one to the uh, beauty and the beta at gmail. We'll just, we'll write California off. It's just, yeah, I don't even read news coming out of California anymore. <laughs> I'm like, eh, screw that state. <laughs> um, Reddick has asked if that was a 4chan troll. I uh, no, they were for real about that. The chainsaw uh, the chainsaw thing yeah i mean maybe they planted it i i wouldn't put it past them to do that but uh, it was but situated with some other ridiculous suggestions though it just usa today most... made the video i yeah. mean it's not like anybody else made the video usa today made it and published it that much we do know um dangerous space that says ash from the evil dead movies attached a chainsaw to the end of his arm the dnc swiftly moved to have him disarmed sorry for how terrible that was <laughs> <Boo>. <laughs> <laughs> mark turvey said i've been creeping your podcast for a little bit now and like your clarity plus you am amuse me we are here to amuse you that we is, do what we can yeah we do what we can yeah thank you <laughs> Uh, JV Dude said, thank you, Matt and Blonde, for making my Sunday night less miserable. P.S. Champagne of beers is greater than Silver Bullet. Matt, would, uh, I don't know what the Champagne of beers is. What's that? Isn't that um, Budweiser? No? Is that what they call it? I don't know. Listen, I, I'm not going to be elitist about my Coors Light, but I will say this. At least they didn't do a social justice commercial campaign with Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen. I don't know I if that's what he's talking about. Okay. Yeah, he might. So I don't want to hold him to that. But if you are talking about, about, about Budweiser, never again will I drink their beer. <laughs> Um, three-sided coin again said, Matt said exactly what I was thinking. Trump should have thrown her a copy of the constitution and read number, read number two and read the rest and show me where it's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, then we have Seg Rims Jin said, we've turned the show into a drinking game. Take a drink. Anytime <laughs> blonde says something you wouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> you will be blacked yeah, you'll... out drunk by the end of the two hours. Don't play this game at home. Yeah, You'll oh die. God. You'll die. Yeah. Um, Chicago conservative said blonde to your question about Chicago violence in your vid has to do with Cabrini green, which is a housing project. It had 15,000 hoodlums. They moved to other parts of the state and raised crime. Um, actually, uh, I had some people in the comments that com did the comparative data between Chicago and Washington, DC. And it turns out that during the time period in question, that was the crack epidemic. And so I was kind of bummed out that I didn't figure that out of myself. It made me feel a little bit retarded, but that is the culprit that caused the huge surge in homicides in the mm. black community um, in the nineties, eighties, nineties. Uh, El Chango said, I'm hoping you guys are having a good night. I wonder how gun control is going to stop criminals from getting guns illegally. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I also would like to know, how they're going to work that one around. Yeah. Did we get the one on ISIS's body count? I think we might have. Did we? Oh, did I miss something? Uh, Redicus? Did we oh, talk sorry. about that Redicus one? sorry. said, what is ISIS's body count? 20,000 to 30,000, including war deaths. I'm not so entirely something sure. Something like that. Uh, I have no idea, but it's a lot. And by the way, ISIS is directly responsible. Like they'll yeah. do it with guns. Yeah. They'll do it with trucks. They'll do it with bombs. They'll mm -hmm. strangle you with their bare hands because well, they are actual murderers. Yep. Uh, um, Nathan but, Perigi, yeah. per, per, Perigny, 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 I don't know. That's a I'm, tough I'm one. I'm fucking up everyone's name. I'm going to go with Perigny. Um, no note though, but thank you for the donation. Josh D. Marshall, you can get all of your gun modifications from Marcus Munitions. Including chainsaw bayonets? They have those? I doubt it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, Revenbard said kebab exterminate us for the win. And then the last one for right now is diggity dank. We have the best host, don't we, folks? Tremendous. Just look at their fan base. Nobody has fans like their fans. That I can tell you. <laughs> Believe me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, it is, it's that time. We'll get this out of the way. We'll get the formalities out of the way. For the, I don't know, 10th and now, show in a row. Nobody saw it happen, but it's totally a product of Trump's America hoax hate crime of the week. Ah, shit, it's backwards. You think they'll notice? Okay, the theme of the hoax hate tonight, it's going to be the big Air Force thing, and then to a lesser extent, this car at Kansas State University. But we've been observing previously what happens when these are proven fakes how do you respond do you try to say oh do they have did that guy have low self-esteem is that why he hates his <laughs> fellow black that. people so much and if you're law enforcement how do you respond so just th that's what i take away from these examples how is leadership and law enforcement responding to proven hoaxes Let's start with the air force this was a big story at the time it was late September. I don't think either of us commented on it formally, but everyone kind of suspected because it fit the mold of what a hoax hate incident would look like. So five black cadets at the U.S. Air Force Academy prep school found various uh, racial slur messages scribbled on their message boards outside of their rooms, just like, a, you know, any college dorm setting marker board. Right. My hate you N word, go away N word, whatever else. Go, go home N words is what one of them said. Hmm. Then Lieutenant General Jay Silveria, he is the superintendent of the academy. And he gave this big grandstanding speech against racism at the academy and just generally among the force. Uh, and he was he, famously, we'll listen to it momentarily here, famously said things like, if you can't, you know, basically be a good person and not judge people who are different from you, you need to get out, presumably meaning get out of the Air Force, I guess, yeah. or yeah. the Air Force uh, Academy. And at the time, he was surrounded by 1,500 members of the school staff. So this was the big grandstanding speech that uh, Lieutenant General Silveria gave at the time. You may have heard that some people down in the prep school wrote some racial slurs on some message boards. If you're outraged by those words, then you're in the right place. That kind of behavior has no place at the prep school, it has no place at USAFA, and it has no place in the United States Air Force. You should be outraged not only as an airman, but as a human being. I would be naive, and we would all be naive to think that everything is perfect here. We would be naive to think that we shouldn't discuss this topic. We would also be tone deaf not to think about the backdrop of what's going on in our country. Things like Charlottesville and Ferguson, the protests in the NFL, and it's about our diversity. And it's the power of the diversity, the power of the 4,000 of you and all you know, it's not the bombs that the Air Force drops on ISIS. It's the diversity, it's the diversity of the pilots right? yeah. that ISIS really fears. You got to watch out. Yeah. All of the yeah. people that are on the staff tower and lining the glass, the power of us as a diverse group, the power of that diversity comes together and makes us that much more powerful. So just in case you're unclear on where I stand on this topic, I want to leave you with my most important thought today. If you can't treat someone with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. If you can't teach someone from another gender, whether that's a man or a woman, with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. If you demean someone in any way, then you need to get out. And if- Just think about that statement too. If you demean someone in any, any way, way, anyone, like some people are very worthy of demeaning and should For be anything? demeaned. I mean, right, that's the question. Are you speaking in absolute terms here? Can I demean Devin Kelly and say he's a piece of shit? Cause he is. Uh, <laughs> no, of course I, not. <laughs> I get the spirit of what he's saying. I just think it's. Do you get the spirit of what he's saying? Because I was listening to this with my mouth hanging open. I was like, this is the most cucked stuff I've ever heard in my <laughs> well, it life. Gets, gets the way power worse. of diversity. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I get what he's saying in the context of just interpersonal exchanges. You know, he, if I demean someone unjustifiably, if I just say, I don't like you on account of who he you didn't are. He did say that though. He said, I know, demean not, anyone, any, or what was exact, his exact terminology? For any reason. If you what demean. Well, there actually, are lots since, of reasons that people should be since, demeaned. Let's since we're breaking this down, I'll, let's, I'll want to get his words again to be precise about it. With dignity and respect, 
then you need to get out. If you demean someone in any way, then you need to get out. And if yeah, it's it's too broad, man. <laughs> what if they were a piece of shit that happens to be a minority? You can't. If they're a piece of shit who's a white person, though, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Ask him. All right, we're almost done with the speech here. You can't treat someone from another race or a different color skin with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. Reach for your phones. I'm serious. Reach for your phones. Grab your phones. I want you to videotape this so that you have it. So no, that you, you can use it. You and if you want, need it, and you, you need my words, then you keep don't these do this. words. Don't do this, if you part, can't man. treat someone with dignity and respect, then get out. I just think of that Jonah Hill gif, like, nah, nah. Dude. You don't, you don't want them recording this, man. It, but they, okay, so oh, it wouldn't man. have mattered if they recorded it or not because the U.S. Air Force put this out on their YouTube channel and this got viral play on their YouTube channel. Anyway, over a million views. Ooh. Oh, and no. he went on Brooke Baldwin's show on CNN shortly thereafter. And I'm not, say, I'm not blaming him for that. Oh, and also Joe Biden and John McCain praised him for this. This was a big political deal. I'm not blaming him necessarily for... Um, going on Brooke Baldwin's show, I more am interested in what Brooke Baldwin has to say here, which is just stretching to blame this on Trump and to st uh, uh, when Trump has nothing to do with this. You can really see you want to see their their the CNN bias fully um, on on full display. This is a good example of it. So this is Brooke Baldwin and Lieutenant General Silveria shortly after his big speech. Some say the president's rhetoric is divisive not that of a commander in chief. Others will say that's why they love him. What is true, whether you agree with him or not, hmm. he has a tendency to go too far, to divide rather than unite. And there's a moment I wanted to share with you today that has so many people saying, those are the words of a leader at a time when a divided nation needs them the most. May I okay, so she just rips Trump unnecessarily, then plays the speech then brings him in and pay attention to her questions and to his credit he doesn't go he doesn't he resists her he resists her trying to politicize it although i still am not a huge fan of his answers he's he, on cnn yeah well i'm just trying to give him some he Why? didn't take the he didn't take the bait fully is all i'm saying Ugh. lieutenant I just say bravo. soy boy <laughs> Oh, and I would love to hear just why you chose to do this head on. Why did you do that? So I wanted to be unambiguous about how we're going to treat this topic. But it, but everything that we do here is about developing these airmen. So I wanted to take an opportunity to also give them a leadership lesson. The implication here, um, you know, those who were elected to lead are not leading and that you, sir, are. Do you think Washington needs better leadership? Brooke, my message, my message to the cadets was, was not about that. Sorry, did you want to comment on that? No, why is this relevant? These... She's she's trying to bait him into yes, condemning exactly. Trump. Yeah. Proceed. But he doesn't, this is what I'm trying to say. He doesn't take that bait, at least. This line of Bro, questioning. My message, my message to the cadets was, was not about that. I wanted to have a direct conversation with them about the power of diversity. You did, General, mention events with ramifications outside the room. You mentioned Ferguson. You mentioned Charlottesville. You mentioned the, the NFL protests. How do you personally feel when you've been watching some of some of these players kneel during the national anthem. We would be tone deaf here to not consider that that's a backdrop of uh, of this incident that's what? happened at the prep school. We Don't be tone deaf, Blonde. <laughs> Clearly related. What are you, tone deaf? Oh, I am woke or whatever. The yeah, kids say yeah. These days. I, I hear all the tones. Yeah. <laughs> Take opportunities like this to teach the cadets and to develop them and to show them what they should be doing, what 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 they should be discussing, and and this how is important what, our values are to us as an Air Force and as an institute. This is what our cadets should be doing and should be discussing. Yeah. Seriously, the power of diversity. Last priority, unimportant, doesn't matter. Will make our military weaker. I. What do you people want? Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, in case you haven't been able to tell already, this is all bullshit. <laughs> Whole thing, bullshit, hoax, faked. Because on Tuesday, the findings of the investigation came out. And the school's investigation concluded one of the alleged victims did it himself. The Colorado <laughs> Springs Gazette reports that the student is no longer enrolled at the school. The student reportedly, quote, committed the act in a bizarre bid to get out of trouble he faced at the school for other misconduct. Womp womp. Okay. 
you guys misjudged what happened here. You leaped to a conclusion without evidence. You made assertions that were unsubstantiated. You know what? It happens. I'll let you off the hook if you say, our bad guys really messed that up. But we know that's not what they're going to do. We know they're not going to own up to these things. So CNN is stunned. And then within CNN's reaction is the lieutenant general's statement. And honestly, uh, I'll be frank, it just pisses me off. His response and CNN's response just plain pisses me off, is what they had to say. A stunning update today on a story we covered in late September. It was a speech heard all around the world, viewed more than a million times uh, on social media. Lieutenant General Jay Silveria received high praise for telling room full of cadets that racial slurs will not be uh, tolerated at the Air Force Academy. After a month-long investigation, officials at the school now say it was all uh, a hoax perpetrated by one of the black students. Oh, this was so huge, is. Ryan. You know, we, we talked to the general. You had former Vice President Joe this Biden. This guy looks like Senator handsome John Ben Shapiro. Shapiro. I just want to point that out. <laughs> handsome. Are you saying Ben's not handsome? I mean, this guy looks like more handsome Ben Shapiro. Oh, okay, good. Now, yeah, I know Ben listens. Now he can be happy. <laughs> Reacting, you know, at, at the time. What happened? Who did this? According to the Air well, Force. The Air Force conducting its investigation did found out that one of the supposed victims of these racist messages was in fact the perpetrator. This individual admitted guilt uh, and the investigation found that the, he was in fact the culprit. The general, you know, in talking to him, he was so sincere with us in his resolve, really with everyone in that room, right, I to promote a culture of respect at the Air Force Academy. How is he responding to this news? Well, the general says he stands by his comments. He said that, you know, it was a, those words were written. He issued a statement to CNN uh, earlier today uh, saying that, you know, regardless of the circumstances, that those those words were written and they needed to be addressed. And uh, so it, it, he said, you know, you can never overemphasize the need of a culture of dignity and respect. And so, again, very... And, they, and it ends, too. And those who don't understand those concepts aren't welcome here. <laughs> Well, who? Who are you talking about that doesn't understand this concept that you're bizarrely, ambiguously threatening? Nobody. You're, you're still making whitey. unsubstantiated general accusations. And that pisses me off. There's a little bit less. Strong too. words uh, backing up uh, what he said. And uh, so he stands by his message and uh, thinks it's a powerful message that should be understood by all airmen, both at the academy and wider. Why couldn't you just be like, yo, we fucked up? And we jumped on this story too fast because we wanted to look good because of this stupid diversity, diversity initiative. Yeah. People would be like, oh, the Air Force is awesome. It pains me to rip a military man, but this guy needs to get bent. He <laughs> needs to fuck off. He gave a totally unsubstantiated virtue yeah. signaling speech, and he was implicitly accusing his cadet candidates of racism when none of them had anything to do with it. And instead of taking ownership and taking leadership when he was proven wrong. And laying into the black student that needed to be done too. Yes. And that too. And maybe he did. I mean, the students, not, the student isn't you there. You know, he didn't come on. You think that that person called up that student was like, you know, shoot him out for that. No, <laughs> nothing happened except for the expulsion. Well, and then, so given the opportunity to admit the mistake, as you said, take leader, take ownership, be a leader, admit the mistake, set an example for your cadet candidates. No, he's, he acts like there was no mistake and his message was good anyway. I, if I were in position to ask him a question, I'd say, what is the moral of the boy who cried wolf? Is the moral, in, in your perspective, that it's okay because the boy gave the town a good lesson about preparing for wolves? <laughs> that the message is still a good one? Because I thought the moral of the story was that lies give people a false sense of alarm. Then they don't trust the liars in the future. And by the way, that's you right now. Yep. And you're a lieutenant general in the Air Force, superintendent of the Air Force Academy, in charge of educating candidates for officers in the United States Air Force. Oh, he still feels good about himself because he protected a minority group. You think that he's <sighs> bad about this? He's like, I'm such a good person for taking care of black people. Black people love me so much. I'm such a good white ally. It's incredibly poor leadership. And well, of um, course it is. I, I don't, like I said, I don't want, I have to give all the disclaimers. I admire his service. I'm, I'm glad he's doing what he is for this country. And it's something that I didn't step up to do. And it's, it's 
Veterans Day weekend. I admire him for that. But that doesn't mean that he gets a free pass on this kind of stuff. You are a leader. You're in a leadership position. Take ownership of your mistakes. Apologize for misleading your cadet candidates. And I'll, I'd be willing to forgive. But no, you still have to say, oh, look how good I, the message is good and people who don't agree with it need to get out. I don't, it's not even that I disagree with it. It's that it was delivered on false premises. Right. And for that, you need to apologize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why couldn't they have just done a basic investigation before issuing a statement that would have taken care of this? Or just say, if they, he could have even condemned it tentatively and said, if this is what it appears to be, this is not welcome here. How do they we'll catch to, this black racist student? They investigated and he admitted to investigating. Ah. So some sort of interrogation. Wow. That's weak, dude. Some they sort had of no questioning. evidence. They just, he just broke under, broke under questioning. He's like, yeah, I did it. I did it all. <laughs> so. God. All right. I'll, I'll be quick with this bonus hoax hate since it's just the yeah. hoax hate show now. Unless you have any more to say about this Air Force guy. Nope. Okay. Let's be quick with this because this is. Another, this, this case just pisses me off too for a different reason. Let's find the uh, article here. This is at Kansas State University. Uh, at Kansas State University, a student reported that his car was painted with racist messages on November 1st. The car, you can see the back window here, says something to the effect of go home, N-word, whites only, date your own kind, <laughs> die. And there's a swastika on like the, the side panel of the car too. Uh, by the way, good indicator that it's a hoax. When it says, when there's a reference to your kind. Yeah. Almost or always. Or it hoax. says anything about Trump. Yeah, yeah. Although I, I don't think, did I don't know if they referenced Trump in this case. No, no. That's just generally a good way to tell if it's hoax hate. Yeah. We would know. We've, we've talked about a thousand of these cases. <laughs> I've never heard anyone seriously reference your kind in any context. What about that retarded yokel that we thought was hoax hate? And I, don't it even out... think, I don't think he even said, oh, by the way, he had a court date last week. Thank you for reminding me. I need to no, circle back to on it. that. Yeah. I don't think he said your kind. He just said day of the rope is coming. <laughs> N-words. Okay. And then was it something he like printed off a picture of the Confederate flag or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so this, what happened then is um, this led to campus protests. And there was a big campus meeting about racism at K-State. Uh, then later, upon investigation, the owner of the car admitted to investigators that he did it himself. And in a statement released by police, the car owner, Dontarius Williams, said he would <laughs> like to deeply apologize to the community. Quote, the whole situation got out of hand when it shouldn't have even started. It was just a Halloween prank. Oh, really, got Dontarius? Out of hand. I wish I could go back to that night, but I can't. I want to apologize from the bottom of my heart oh uh, for the pain and news I have brought to you all. I don't know what he means by the pain and news, but whatever. The fake news. How about that? This is the worst part of all of this. I don't know if I can. Yeah, look at this. Two, two law enforcement agencies involved. Local law enforcement, the county there, and the FBI because it's this hate crime incident. <laughs> Uh, there will be no charges filed because police decided that despite filing a false report, prosecuting Williams would not be in the finest interests, the best interests, I should say, of the citizens of Manhattan, Kansas. Um, Why? That, that's what pisses me off. Even though he wasted police time, he wasted the FBI's time, he filed a false report. Why? You know, if hate crimes weren't a different classification for crime, which it's retarded that, that they are, the FBI never would have gotten involved in any of these cases and wasted their resources. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's true. I think that is the reason the FBI was involved. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but I think, I think Unless that's why. Unless somebody murdered or something, the FBI is not going to bother getting involved in all this yeah. minuscule, these tiny college shit. But that's the structure we have, and that's what he alleged, and those are the premises under which he filed a false report. Sorry, dude, you waste that much public resource, yeah. public time. You should be prosecuted. I don't care how sad you are. The police director says, uh, quote, while William's mistake had a decidedly negative impact on the community, please recognize that he, like many of us when we were young, is a is a young man who made a mistake and is now doing his best to own how up to young? it. How young? How young are we talking? He's 21. Oh, oh, you're 21 when you made up a hoax hate crime. Ugh. I never filed a false report, police <laughs> report when I was 21. I never lied to police. I never abused public resources when I was 21. And stop making him a victim. He's not a victim. He is committing a crime. Prosecute him. Yeah. It's, this isn't hard. It's, it's just. Date your own kind and die. <laughs> <laughs> 
in that order, of course. <laughs> get, get a few dates in, then. <laughs> so, listen, I hope that is the end of hoax hate for a while. I'm serious. I want. I don't want to kill the bit because I like talking about these things. But I, it's there's so much of it. I just feel overloaded by it, and yet we're still made to feel bad when we have skepticism the next time exactly. these allegations come around without evidence. And the media covers these events so heavily that, but but then they'll never cover the subsequent event. Like I'm I'm amazed that CNN even admitted what they did. You know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, you're right. I'm surprised they just they didn't just move they on. They didn't just move on. That's normally what they do, which is why we cover these things because we feel like we have an obligation since so much of the initial coverage um, just made people believe that this these hoax hate incidents are happening yeah. all the time and they're Remember never happening. Remember Sebastian Gorka, uh, who was formerly in the administration, and when he went on, forget if what network he went on, but he was challenged on the Minnesota mosque bombing, which as of yet is also entirely unsubstantiated. And he was ripped at the time when he said, there's a good rule of thumb, which is basically that all first reports should be presumed to be false. He said something to that effect and they said oh he doesn't believe that the muslims were attacked by some hateful white man or something and time and time again whether you like sebastian gorka or the trump administration or not that is the correct approach to take on these things right. hold on let's wait for the facts i don't care if you call us racist i don't care if you call us bigoted i don't care if demanding evidence is gets the presumption of bigotry or whatever else that's the system we operate under and i'm not going to be made to feel guilty for asking these questions in the presence of all of these obvious hoaxes. I, the, you still feel guilty for stuff like this? You no, mean, but people try to make you. Far enough to the right if you're still feeling bad. <laughs> people about. try to make you. Yeah. Uh, although, interestingly, the last thing I'll say on this too, Washington Post coverage of the Air Force hoax mentioned the frequency of hoax hate in its article and also referenced this Kansas State story. So even the Washington Post <laughs> is saying, well, guys, there's a lot of... There's a lot of hoaxes going yeah. around. I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> That's the Washington Post. Oh, Speaking man. of which, they called Roy Moore a predator. Washington Post. Oh, Washington really? Post making massive allegations against Roy Moore and every celebrity under the sun is a sexual predator. Coming up next, but we should probably take a break before we get into that. Um, sure. I assume. Maybe I should just start at the top and work my way backwards. Oh, I don't, that seems this. unfair, though. Why? Because the people at the bottom were the ones who posted first. Oh, do you remember who the last? Diggity And then dang, we lose. The then we one. lose track too. Um, Neat Suj said, "No Islamic terrorist would ever bow down like that to an infidel." <laughs> That's Not yeah. really. Uh, Love the nerd said, "Saying hi from Seattle." Um, hey. I'm pretty glad I found you guys and that I shared you with Andrew and Maramantha. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing the show. Enjoy Seattle. It's, it doesn't seem like it's going to be here for much longer. People are insane. <laughs> um, Kingsley Abraqua said, I'm pretty left of center, but I'm very pro Second Amendment. But my living girlfriend doesn't like them. Advice on getting her to be comfortable with them for protection. Um, you can just tell her because you laid on the law. I mean, yeah. Take her shooting, too. I, um, so I took my girlfriend yeah. shooting for several reasons. One was to just have her understand what it's like to yeah. shoot a gun, but also for the purpose of home defense. Like if she were in a position that she needed to use a firearm in home defense, she'd be able to do that. And um, her understanding the way, you know, a semi-automatic rifle works, the way a handgun works, the way a shotgun works. Uh, it's not like she's an avid marksman <laughs> now, but she understands how these things work and she is at least able to see through a lot of the media bullshit. Right. And I know a few people that have shot guns and then not been like, that was awesome. If they're unfamiliar oh, yeah, with guns, it's tons so of fun. We, super fun, yeah. I, she had a lot of fun shooting uh, clays, just shooting clays with a shotgun. Make it a date. It's, that was my yeah. second date with my fiance. It was a lot maybe they like it, maybe they don't. But I don't know anyone who is like that one guy who claims he got PTSD from shooting an AR-15. What a pussy! Whatever. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jade Sue said, since you both have sweet, steady internets now, is there a possibility to use Streamlabs? Hate giving a chunk of my donations to YouTube. Holiday uh, seems knowledgeable, and I'm sure he'd be happy to help um stream what, I, don't, I don't even know so it's it an alternative as far as i understand it's an alternative revenue stream i mean it's possible but at the end of the day man we want it to be as convenient as possible for everybody i mean we, we could discuss these things behind the scenes but there's going to be a middleman in everything you do i know youtube takes a nice chunk of the super chat but it's nice and easy for everybody and i don't have a problem with the owners of the infrastructure capitalizing on their system i i wish we could bargain a lower rate for them yeah. but you know for for now we're obviously happy to have support from anybody on any format they choose so yep. if if it's something additional that we can set up that people want to go to that's fine um 
but I definitely don't want to shut down Super Chat. That's all I'm saying. Um, thank you for that donation. DKJ Spec says, uh, Richard Sherman t- uh, t- takes a shit, wait, talk shit, <laughs> talks shit on Trump. My vision is so bad. Follows Rogers, um, OBJ, and others to oh, IR. Yeah. Really activates my almond skull. Yeah, that was like yeah, yeah. nonsense to me. Okay, so he, what he's talking about is there's a series of NFL players who have ripped Trump who have also suffered season-ending injuries. And your guy, Richard Sherman, uh, Pro Bowl cornerback for your Seattle Seahawks, ruptured his Achilles on Thursday night. Oh, I don't, yeah, I I don't know, know if he... Um, if he has said anything about Trump recently, I know he backed Michael Bennett during the I was racially profiled by the Las Vegas police nonsense. Uh, so there's maybe something to this conspiracy theory. I don't know. It's it's interesting. Although bashing Trump is just a major trend in the NFL, it seems. So it's just by sheer happenstance. There's a lot of people bashing Trump and a lot of people getting injured. So I, I don't know if I'd fully buy the tinfoil, but it's possible. <laughs> Um, Brian Gasson said, wasn't going to comment tonight, but it's Miller High Life, you millennial swine. That's the champagne okay. of beers. Oh, we're Fa- okay, fucking fair fake enough. News. Fair fake enough. News. Well, I don't know. We qualified it, but um, if you want, it is, he sounds rather I'm not passionate. A drinker. I, don't, I don't know. So we'll give it where it's. You are fake news. news. Very Brian. fake news. I can't lecture Jay Silveria for not taking ownership of his words and then back off myself. <laughs> Look, the message against Budweiser was <laughs> the correct <laughs> message, okay? <laughs> If that was the proper thing to say. And anyone who doesn't agree with it, frankly, you need to get, get out. out. Yeah. Get out. Yeah. Uh, David Jones said, did you guys hear about Kyle Chapman? He had his car smashed up at his house done Jeez. while he was out drinking by 20 Antifa. <sighs> Jesus Christ. So no, I did base, not hear about that. base stick man for people who do not know who Kyle Chapman is. Oh, yeah. Well, does he still live in the Bay? I would just move away if I was him. Yeah. I, I mean... Yikes. Um, David Blackstone said, if you want another good example of heroism like this, then look at the University of Texas Bell Tower shooting a new documentary about it was released recently. Check it out. Is it on? Oh, no. uh, send me a link to it. If it's on Netflix or yeah. something, I'll definitely check it out. I'm um, not familiar with the case. Big donation from James Ross, giving back to the people that paid my salary for so many years while I was serving the government. Semper Fi. Thank you very much. Oh, well, James. thank you. Really and happy birthdays it. to the Marine Corps as well. Yes, indeed. The coward Liberia said this fake hate crime was an implicit attack against whites attempting to paint them as a group as racist. This in and of itself makes it a real hate crime, but against yeah. whites to the media not caring. Yeah, the media doesn't care about any of I've this. I've heard that argument, and I think that's fair. I mean, mm-hmm. it's implicit. It's implied, but it's certainly heavily implied that it is a racist right. white culprit. So I don't know that I can get fully on board, but I can see the, I can see the argument. I can't. I implied. mean, stuff like this, the media, the media's treatment of white people has made people that were, amb- you know, they didn't care that they were white, actually feel like they're backed into a corner and start to identify with other disenfranchised people. And now they're a yeah. group of pissed off disenfranchised people. It's like you, can you, only you be, created these, these, this racist you, situation. Yeah, you can only be told you suck because you're white so many, so times, many times before you start to say you get defensive about that. Yeah. And then you look around, it's all these other white people and you're like, oh, you suck too. So do I. Let's all yeah. hang out. I guess. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Redicus said, dignity and respect are earned, not given. And I demean plenty of people. So go fuck off. And then again, I am not a cadet. Oh, Pearl Clutcher and chief. Hmm. Uh, Joel Dykeman, armies traditionally won because of unified goals and objectives. Diversity and warfare tended to fractionalize armies and lead to infighting. Oh, yeah. Any yeah. internal conflict in a, in a combat group, I, uh, I would not, uh, I'd be worried about that. That's and I've I'm heard saying. that argument about transgender, uh, that yeah, that around. argument was thrown around. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying, uh, it's, uh, whatever, I, we don't need to go down that. I'm just saying, to your point that you made earlier, it, if we're assembling a combat squad, I want the finest soldiers. Right. I don't want, well, who's the black guy in the and squad? Who's the tranny? And right. No, that's not who, yeah, exactly. Uh, Josh G. Marshall said, does the Air Force have its own diversity budget? Um, does it? I know we were talking about some military arm some military branch the only place i've heard of or was it the cops had a divert there was a police department, was a police department in the yeah. uk that had a diversity budget i was going to blame the canadians but it was the uk ah okay i was so, going to so say that sounded that sounds like thing. a canadian thing yeah. although my friend in british columbia bitches about their rainbow crosswalks which i think is part of municipal diversity budgets oh, in canada so I, I think those on. exist in canada perhaps Jeez, at least in this neighborhood. Um, Sam said, at this point, just rename the segment to Clayton Bigsby Hate Crime of the Week. Use white power as an intro audio or any quote. It's all cool. <laughs> uh, Redica said, is that court martial material? 
Um, Brian, we have a few more. Brian Gasson. Oh you know, yeah, for the cadet. I, 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 I'm curious about that because you're just a probably someone in the Air Force or in the military think. could explain it to me because you're not actually an officer yet. You're basically like going to an, a college to prepare to become an officer. I don't think so, you could be court martialed for that. Are, are they are they considered military personnel or are they still civilians? I don't know. I, Somebody I don't know in the live chat answer that for us and we'll we'll circle back. Um Brian Gasson said, except not everyone deserves dignity and respect. Dignity and did I read this? Dignity and respect is earned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant I think Jay so. Or it's so very similar soft. to he'll to no American. doubt be accused of sexual assault. This is a different one, actually. Oh boy. Um, Tyler Rabinald said, tone deaf, this guy has no respect among the crew. Virtue signaling among military brass is the norm now. Yeah, I have a hard time believing that a bunch of red-blooded, conservative, masculine American men wouldn't see that and be like, wow, our leadership is just cucked, right? Hmm. Yeah, I uh, was... <laughs> I don't know. If I were in that situation, I'd be really pissed off. I'd feel okay. like that is just a total failure of leadership and I'd be really mad. I'm really mad and I'm not involved. Oh, Lori Randolph gave us a donation. No note though. Thank you very much. Dangerous spaces. That is what we need. A military that jumps to conclusions and responds accordingly. There's no way that's going to end badly. I know, right? Um, El Chango said, are you telling me the same guy who reported the racial slurs is the same one who wrote him? Well, imagine my shock. Well, yeah. that speech was all in vain. Yep. Yeah. Um, Mr. Spock said, shout out to my fellow vets who served during Desert Storm. Thank you, well, Mr. Thank Spock. thank you and happy Veterans Day and thank you for serving. Friend of the show, Stan said, Blonde 2017, quote, date your own kind and die your <laughs> treasure. That was a direct quote yeah. <laughs> of this hoax hate black guy, so don't blame me. And then last one for right now is Marcus Payne, supposed racist cadet that they thought had written the message originally would have just would have been just as young, but no mistake talk. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's not principled. It's just scrambling to defend these people who don't need to be defended. They are committing vi whatever you want to call it, crimes, violations, d dishonesty, deception. They are committing it. We should not be scrambling to defend them. We should shame them. Bring back shame. Blonde 2017. Date your own kind. And I'm looking at all the bumper stickers. Date your own kind and die. <laughs> Bring back shame. All the all the bum bumper stickers. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Let's get to the sex assault. I guess. Okay. Everyone's a predator. The last thing I wanted to do was like sit here and look at all the people who have been accused in the last week or two and decide, do we believe the accusations or do we not? So because it was such a heavy week of accusations, I figured it'd be helpful just to go go through them like the okay. week that was but we'll be quick about it and move on to what i think is the more important talking point yeah i mean i think it's important to talk about these things because everybody that's getting accused of sexual assault in this giant torrent of accusations is being made to be like a pedophile or rapist mm -hmm. and there's some nuance here i mean we gave milo you know we gave milo some nuance we should approach all sexual assault cases with with that in mind i mean so, so many people were accused this week. George Takai, which I have heard rumors about before, and I had actually um, heard that Howard Stern clip that we're going to play before. Mm. Um, but he was accused this week of inviting a 23-year-old model up to his apartment in 1981, then getting him drunk, and then stripping him, like, basically naked and trying to grab his, his junk, like, mm. underneath his underwear. And then the guy said that he, like kind of got out of his drunken tizzy and like woke up and was like, stop, stop. And then ran out and drove away. So, but this mm. was, you know, 30 years, 30 plus years ago. Yeah. 81. Yeah. Mm. Um, Louis CK also this week, I've, there have been rumors swirling around him for years. I, I think I, the first time I heard something about this was like seven years ago, six or seven years ago. Uh, so the New York times, I believe they came out with an article where five women accused Louis CK of some sort of, I wouldn't even call this sexual assault, but four of them are, are uh, out. One is still anonymous, and one of them was over the phone. And so I'm, I'm like, ah, eh, that doesn't really count either. <laughs> she said that he could, she could hear him jerking off over the phone. Oh, 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 I thought you meant she made the accusation over the phone. You mean no. that he actually basically did some kind of phone sex with her? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's like, I could hear him like furiously masturbating <laughs> on the phone. And then the other three women, two of them were together. They were comedians, and this was like. They were like, well, he asked us if he could take out his penis and masturbate. And we were like, okay. The, no harm, no foul as far as I'm. I mean, it's fucking yeah. weird. Don't it's get me wrong. Weird. It's well, weird, then they were but... just like laughing and he was yeah. jerking off. And Look, if you consent, they got up and left. you consent. Yeah. And then That's one, of, I think one of the women said that he just did it. I'm not sure if 
if there was one accusation that and there was it, no consent. I'm not, this I'm is not. a weird case too, because it, is it even indecent exposure if it's like in a private setting? Like I can't walk out in public and expose myself to somebody, but if you if you like come over to my house to hang out and I expose myself to you, is that is that what is that considered? Like is well, that I mean, sec- if you didn't ask. Yeah, but it's like in my house. Well, it's not public indecency. Is it? Is it impro- Is it a violation of any sort? Not legally, but just in terms of what I should be shamed for. If someone came over to my house and I said, "Hey, I'm in my house. Here's my wiener," and I just pulled it out. Yeah, I think that that's an okay thing to shame people about for mm. being fucking weird. But I'm not going to treat them like they're rapists. Right? Is it abuse? Is it harassment? I no, guess it's, it's just weird, like beta male behavior. I don't know. I think that I was talking to my brother about this and I think that maybe Louis is like kind of the victim of believing in sexual egalitarianism. Like no woman ever wants to see a guy jerk off. If you're listening to this and you think that a woman wants to see you jerk off, you're wrong. No woman wants to see that. But he's like, oh, well, men like to see that because we're visual creatures. And so maybe these women want to see that because, you know, sexual yeah. egalitarianism. So now I kind of feel bad for him. He's like the only one that I'm like, oh, Louis too. All right. Now we're dissecting each case and I didn't want to do that. Okay, fine. So let's, let's keep going. Kevin Spacey accused of groping a 14 year old when he was 26. And then I've heard a bunch of other accusations that were similar swirling around. He checked himself into sex rehab. Uh, I think the one that Weinstein was checked into this week. Hmm. Okay. Um, Charlie Sheen, there was a National Enquirer story uh, about him this week saying that he raped Corey Haim on the set of Lucas, which I think was in the 80s. Um, That hasn't been substantiated. Uh, Charlie Sheen's denying it. Um, But I think Corey Feldman did mention in his previous book that Corey Haim had been raped on the set of Lucas, so it's substantiated to some degree. But, you know, Charlie Sheen's denying it. Uh, and then Richard Dreyfus include or was accused from a writer for Vulture, uh, hmm. Jessica Teak. Uh, he was accused of exposing himself to her, I think, also in the eighties. So hmm. yeah, okay. And then there's the story of Roy, Roy Moore. If you want to discuss that now, yeah, let's let's just get through that quickly. So Roy Moore is the uh, he's formerly Judge Roy Moore. He's the Republican nominee for Senate in Alabama in their special election to replace. Um, uh, what's his face? Our attorney general, the guy, the, why is his name escaping me? Jeff Sessions, Jeff Sessions. Um, and now he's accused of a series of sexual transgress- transgressions, uh, breaking from the Washington post. Yeah. I mean, it's this, it's this chick that's in her fifties now. And she said that when she was 14, um, that this, you know, this older man, he was in his 30s at the time, approached her and then built a relationship with her, picked her up from her house when she was just 14, and then like had her get naked at his house um, and touched her. And she touched him. It didn't sound like it was a rape accusation. Yeah. And then there were two other loose accusations um, around him as well. But the girls were 16 and 18. Mm. Okay. So this one, I mean, this is literally just somebody saying that this happened. Okay. Did you watch Sean Hannity's statement about this? No, I know Sean got in trouble for saying something like it. He said something pretty fair um, that it was consensual. I mean, even if it was consensual, it is pretty weird. We got to be if it's true, it's pretty melted down about it. But I thought that. And by the way, 14 is below the legal age. Like, yeah, I don't know what he said, but you there's no consent when you're 14. I was talking about his opening when when he talked about this. Oh, people were freaking out about that. And I thought that he was saying, you know, like, um, like we have to give him his day in court. We, everybody jumped on Duke lacrosse. Everybody's jumped on all sorts of accusations. We can't just destroy people's reputations yeah. and everything. And then later I heard that in some sort of transcript or something like that, that he said that um, this was consensual. Yeah. I've so. heard people say that was misrepresented. I've heard people jumping on him. I haven't looked into it myself to say where I stand on that. So uh, I wanted to highlight before we hop into broad themes here, this George Takai case, not because I necessarily consider George Takai, not for political reasons. I just consider it a fascinating case because he is kind of a uh, a quasi god among the progressive left, the social justice left, whatever you want to call them. So it really pits for them um, like one of their people up against their standard of listen and believe for sexual assault allegations. Yeah. And I've been fascinated to watch this develop. Are they going to defend him? Are they going to jump on him as as we're supposed to do? Like any any good progressive victim defender uh jury's still out on that but what makes this case interesting is a couple things one he recently went on the howard stern show as you mentioned you listened to this previously 
I mean, how I, recent was that? It's it's a couple of weeks ago. It's like after the Harvey Weinstein story broke, so it's pretty recent. Uh, I don't think I'm being unfair to say that he all but admitted to yeah. coercing sex. Would that he, be? He good? was really evasive initially, and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here's what he said. I don't want to be unfair to him, but I, it's uh, you know, it's a it's a tough look too. Why is my video popping up? Let's try this. By the way, I I, I suppose Here you know go. with this Harvey Weinstein thing in the uh, news, of course, all over the news. Yes. Um, that that uh, it, it, the irony is uh, we have a man in the White House who talked about grabbing exactly. pussies. There is an irony about all of this, is there not, George? Well, it's a repetition, you know, because... All your years involved with cock, you never gr hassled anybody or grabbed their cock. You never grabbed cock. anybody by the cock. Yeah. Did you ever grab anyone by the cock against their will? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Well, they were different times. Or something? You never sexually harassed anyone. Hey, boner. Have you? Uh, it's it's some people that are kind of um, um, skittish, right? Uh, or maybe um, uh, oh. afraid. And you're trying to persuade. Do we need to call the police? What is, what, what is he saying, <laughs> Howard? But you never uh, held a job over someone if they didn't. No, get no, no, no. I never did that. Oh, no. I see. What Were did these, you do? Yeah, that's it what this is all about. Work situations, though. It's about. It's not about sex. It's about power. But you didn't do this grabbing at work. Oh no, no, it wasn't uh, at work. Oh good. It was either. <laughs> In my home. Oh, okay. They came to my home. Well, that was right. an open invitation. So what do you mean? Like, there'd be some guy who was hesitating to have sex with you, and then you gave him a, a gentle uh, 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 squeeze on the on the balls or something? Ah! More than a gentle. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't, that didn't involve power. I see. Over the other. Or, or the um, <laughs> Trump guy. Uh, you know, this, that's about power. By the way, I so I if you're the same socioeconomic class as somebody else and they still rape you, yeah, it, I, it's not rape because it wasn't about that power. kind of power. Yeah, I don't understand his distinction there at all. I don't think it's meaningful at all. I uh, I'm trying. I tried to understand what he means, but I just I don't see it. I don't see the ethical or legal distinction between. Uh, I mean, I understand that like dangling a job in front of a person in some sort of exchange. I mean, if anything, that's prostitution. I feel better about that. Right. If anything, that's more justifiable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, to be clear, I'm not in favor of that either. But if two I'm parties agree to exchange yeah. things and the terms are clear, I'm generally fine with that. Other than like, hey, this guy seems resistant. So I'm going to grab him more than gently yeah. to try to get him to participate in this with me. Because he's too skittish. We need right. to make him less skittish with all this cock grabbing. <laughs> now, did you see George Takai is taking a lot of heat for this? Uh, <laughs> he deleted this tweet in a matter of minutes earlier today. Oh. <laughs> but George Takai just blamed Russia for spreading the, sex, uh, the sexual assault accusation against him. A friend sent me this, says George Takai, uh, on Twitter earlier today, I think. It's a chart of what Russian bots on social media have been doing to amplify stories containing the allegations against me. It's clear they want to count me into silence, but do not fear, friends. I won't succumb to that. And then he links the source, and it was gone in a matter of minutes. But That's holy humiliating. Cow. Do you think he really believes that? Probably not. Ru it was probably just a PR spin. Russian bots are amplifying false accusations against me? What? That is some next level stuff. That's great though. Anything that takes away power from the stupid Russia narrative. I think that this would. <laughs> George Takai using this to deflect his sexual yeah. assault accusations, I say would re weaken the Russian narrative. Now, as I said, it seems that everybody is just retreating to their quote unquote sides and you defend people you like on your side because nothing's proven. You can't prove anything and you attack people on the other side because, well, the, the accusations are credible. Don't you believe they would do this? They're a terrible person. Disavow, disavow. Mm -hmm. What's lacking is a lot of objectivity, a lot of um, standards. I'm fine. I think there's some wiggle room on what we are willing to accept or what we're not. And it's certainly on a person to person basis, but we've all got to be honest about what our standards are and apply them universally to our friends and our foes alike. If you want an explanation or a demonstration about how not to do that, of what the opposite of that is and what the worst possible angle on this is. Oh my, how I once, we once had a thing, Mr. Bill Maher, I used to love you, you used to be funny, you used to be insightful, I swear, it's hard to remember those times. Used but here's, to. here's what Bill Maher had to say on his show on Friday night regarding this stuff. 
But uh, what a night, what a week. Welcome to another edition of Who Pulled Their Dick Out This Week? <laughs> Let's start just in the political realm. Judge Roy Moore, you're following this? He's the Republican, up for, you know, probably going to be the senator from Alabama. Okay. Turns out when he was in his 30s and a district attorney, he got with a 14-year-old. This is the allegation, but there's a lot of people backing it up. Had an inappropriate relations with three other teenage girls. I mean, inappropriate for our state. <laughs> to defend my truck our state in which hollywood exists and yeah. everybody's raping everyone but we're too morally superior for alabama okay and then he goes into this bit about defending his tribe tribe here a little bit liberals versus conservatives because certainly sexual harassment is absolutely the one thing we see now is totally truly bipartisan maybe the last thing that is <laughs> but no liberal defended harvey weinstein or kevin spacey who might be going to jail Anthony Weiner is in jail. Louis C.K., we hear this week, did horrific things. Compare that to Trump horrific. and Roy Moore. We arrest our alleged rapists. They elect them. Yeah. So I love how he says, we're not going to make this into a sides thing. But by the way, it's totally a sides thing. He just cast <laughs> Trump as an alleged rapist. Yes. Correct. That, that's not a miscarriage. I've never even heard that accusation being thrown around. What a lying piece of shit. I did look into this. There was that one bizarre lawsuit that alleged that he like raped a 16 year old. It never oh went my anywhere. God, I forgot about and that. And it was that always was like of the BuzzFeed caliber. Yeah. yeah. There, there was basically never any credibility to this. Uh, and by the way, I don't know. You want to talk about alleged rapists? Bill Clinton? Yeah. How about that? We, we, they elect theirs. Yeah. So do you. Yeah. And Anthony yeah. Weiner, pedo. Ed Murray, your guy in Seattle. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna make. The, I'm not gonna take the position that either side has some sort of unique monopoly over these things. I think that this tends to be a phenomenon that exists where power exists. Right, power is exerted upon people to get them to do things that you would like them to I do. I still even maintain if they don't want that the left is more morally bankrupt, and more people in the media and in Hollywood and in politics are on the left. Yeah. Uh, all I will say is that this is a dynamic that exists across political alignment. Like it is a function yeah, of- that's popping up way more often amongst these morally bankrupt leftists. This is not a bipartisan issue. What, what do you mean? What do you mean well, I guess it is. I mean, we're, it, we're seeing this, we're seeing a disproportionate number of sexual assault and allegations come out of the left for obvious reasons I, here. I don't, I don't have a, the numbers in front of me and I don't, I don't want to sit here and debate like who does it more? All I want to know is- uh, all I want us to do, us as a group, like everybody who's listening to this and us, everybody who's speaking with one another, think about the objective standards we're going to use when we're judging other people in doing this. So I was trying to, trying to think about this, like what is the standard by which I am going to judge a sexual assault allegation or abuse or harassment or whatever, other than do I like this person's politics or whatever else? Do I like this person or not? So yeah. I was thinking about the factors, like absent conclusive proof of course like if there's conclusive proof or an, uh, uh, an admission like okay. Louis C.K. admits I have to have at a minimum an accusation of a rape like okay so it's got to be rape yeah the accusations that I'm getting he whipped his dick out in 1975 I don't give a shit about any of that you can't prove any of it all you're telling me is something that may or may not have happened that I can never substantiate and yeah. it's basically un rape. unwanted touching is the line that you're drawing <sighs> Or is that even too, too? That's, no, I think it's got to be like forcible sex of sorts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that's the quality. That's like, what is that? What is actually being alleged? I'm not saying I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to believe every accusation that I hear, but unless at a minimum that's being alleged, I'm pretty much going to write this off. Okay. So let's say it is of a severity that you find to be serious enough that we should like dismiss this person, not vote for this person, not support this person, shame this person. But we don't have proof that it happened. We have an accusation. Like what are the factors that we're supposed to consider? I was thinking about like the Cosby rule. Is there a number of accusers? Is there a yeah, certain threshold yeah. of accusers? I mean, I was numbers? skeptical about Cosby, like still like three to five accusers. And I was still skeptical until I started hearing the same kind of, he lured them in the same way. Yeah. And people... I know that this is not a very good 
argument, but like you, some, some of these stories have a quality of truth, like, like Bill Cosby's, you know, like hmm. he plied me with quaaludes and brought me under this false pretense of, of an acting gig. Like, yeah, I heard that from 30 people by the end of that, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's what frustrates me is because there's credibility and volume like that. There's also credibility in the quality of the accuser. It could be one very credible individual accuser who puts his or her name on the yeah. record. And her and name is worth 10 hookers. Has, <laughs> has never lied before, those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, but I can't, because I can't make those standards objective, the only thing that I can go with personally as I'm thinking about this is I'm just going to go with the innocent until proven guilty angle. I acknowledge that the nature of these accusations is they are almost impossible to prove, though. They are decades old in many cases. Yeah, uh, and some are, people are never going... There's, there's going to be like no justice for Harvey Weinstein because of how he went about doing this. Yeah, I guess I, I'm going with this because it's the only objective standard that I can formulate. You know, it's, it's, and I, at the end of the day, I want to have the same standard to to judge people, uh, no matter what. And that's the only one that I can come up with, unless you can prove to me that it happened. I, I personally am going to assume that it didn't, but. I'm not saying everyone else must do that. Mm -hmm. All I would say is I think each individual person has to have that objective standard ironed out for himself or herself in, in his or her head. So we're not right, just doing right, the, right. that person's on my team, so it's cool. But if you're not on my team, then it's not cool. Right, exactly. And it's also, I mentioned this at the top of the show, but it's, it's really problematic to have a blanket accusation against all people being accused of sexual assault within a timeline. Like, for Kevin Spacey to get the same treatment as Louis C.K. is ridiculous. Mm. Like, what did Bill Maher say about Louis C.K.'s crime? Horrific crimes. <laughs> Horrific, yeah. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, we've got to treat these cases differently. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, if people have different thoughts on this, if you feel like you have a, a better objective standard by which to judge these, uh, my opinion on this is very much flexible if I'm presented with a better idea. I've just wrestled with this in my head and thought, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm kind of doing the same thing. Like I look at George Takai and think, ah, that guy did it. But it's based on right. my hatred of his tweets and stuff. It's not yeah, based yeah. on. There's no, I mean, there's no real evidence. And he's categorically yeah. denied this, which yeah. we didn't see in Louis C.K.'s. Like some of these people have come out and been like, yeah. And I don't want to live in a world where it's like, I'd be less harsh on George Takei if only he didn't tweet such stupid things. I don't, <laughs> it's, that doesn't make sense. I don't want to live with that. Pre-existing knowledge of somebody's stupidity. It's really hard to eliminate that bias. I know. I know. So, you know, if, if, if people have better ideas, more than open to them, I'd, I'd like to hear some thoughts on it, but we got to keep things moving. Cause we got 20 minutes left and three topics to cover. They can be quick. But yeah, we'll have let's to... go through a few more before we get back to super chat. Okay. We could just go through all of them pretty quickly and then super chat to close the show. Yeah. Okay, this Rand Paul assault. How weird. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of coverage of this. I've seen some. Uh, but as we mentioned at the top of the show, he was uh, he was mowing his lawn at his home in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And his neighbor, his neighbor is um, Rene Boucher. And his neighbor is, a, is a, I guess, a physician Democrat. But it doesn't appear that there's any political motivation behind this. His neighbor tackled him when he was getting off of his riding lawnmower I saw five, but you say six. So five. I think five. Rand Paul had an update tweet where he was like, by the way, I actually broke six ribs. Okay, so we'll go with six. We'll we'll believe him in the absence of evidence, even though I said <laughs> maybe he's presenting the evidence. I don't know. What we don't have evidence of is that this was political in nature, and that's denied by Boucher's lawyer, the attacker. Instead, it appears uh, Paul's lawn and neighborhood, it appears motivated by the condition of uh, Rand Paul's lawn and his failure to ob observe and abide by neighborhood homeowners association rules. Rand Paul grows pumpkins on his property and he composts. And according to the New York Times, he quote, shows little interest for neighborhood regulations. So enter our author at GQ here, Jack Moore, who you may remember, remember when we were talking about the ne Netflix series, Dear White People, and yeah, there was this yeah. mysterious tweeter named Jack Moore who had tweeted, fuck white people upon Donald Trump's election, <laughs> and nobody could figure out if he was connected to the show for real or not. I don't know that that was ever resolved, but we do know that it's the same guy. It's the same <laughs> Twitter account. He works at GQ now. He's rivaling uh, Keith Olbermann for biggest idiot at GQ. It's a fierce competition. This is what he has to say. <laughs> Uh, this is what he writes about the incident. So let's read between the lines a bit here. 
Rand Paul is an asshole neighbor. He bought a house in a neighborhood that has certain rules with regard to lawns, and he decided that he doesn't need to follow those rules because of his belief in, quote, property rights that don't actually exist. What? Womp womp. <laughs> this is, at its core, the problem with libertarianism. Libertarians don't want to follow the rules that we as a society have agreed upon because they feel those rules step upon their freedoms, and sometimes they might even be right. But that doesn't mean they are above those rules and can do whatever they want. Well, may maybe there's a nugget of truth there. It also doesn't mean that they're supposed to be assaulted in response to their alleged breaking and of the, those what rules. What does that mean? Property rights don't actually exist? I have no idea. What is... I, I tried to figure that out. I don't understand. I can't contextualize that. I don't understand what he means when he says need to follow property those rights. Rules belief of his, in, or his belief in property rights that don't actually exist. I have no idea. I think he's saying that, that, the, proper, that the property exists for all people so you can't actually own the property the property right shouldn't actually exist is this guy just a fucking socialist <laughs> i don't know uh we need to seize the means of pumpkin production at Rand paul's <laughs> lovely bowling green home apparently uh I mean, I get it. I understand but as someone who lives in a neighborhood with homeowners association rules, some of which I am fully behind, some of which I find annoying, some of which I may have violated in the past. I understand annoyance with that. And I understand annoyance with neighbors who are not good at observing them either, but under no circumstance or condition would I go over to my neighbor's home onto his property and break his ribs over his violation of these things. And I think right. that's point one. Point one of this is this is an assault. This is an unjustified assault. I don't care what you think about property rights or not. This is yeah. And you have to like really kick the shit out of a grown man to break six of his ribs. I yeah. mean, that's no small thing. I've been in car accidents that have done that kind of damage. That's a, that's a serious assault. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, if anyone has clarification on what they think of property rights over at GQ, <laughs> I'd like to know. Yikes. We'll move on from that one because that's basically all there is to that story, as far as I can tell so far. This story I like a lot, though, because, um, you know, it's the uh, same thing with George Takai. It's forcing people who have set standards for their opposition to apply those standards to their same tribe on the uh, progressive side of the aisle the or the regressive side, whatever you want to call them. But this is a case of... Um, this woman who is a DC area resident, her name is Julie Briskman and she lives near Sterling, Virginia. She was out riding her bike when the Trump motorcade left an area golf course. And she was snapped by a white, a white house photographer in the motorcade of her riding her bike, giving the president's motorcade the finger. This photo went viral and it was at the time unknown who she actually was, but it was just, it was, um, being distributed under the hashtag her 2020. So like anonymous giving Trump the finger lady to run for 2020 presidency, go for it. If that's her platform, I'm sure you'll do great. Anyway, she sees this going viral and she decides to make it her Facebook and Twitter profile pictures. That was stupid. She works at a marketing and community or worked, I should say at a marketing and communications firm that is a government contractor. It's called Akima LLC. Now, it should be noted, of course, that she was not on the job at the time of this finger incident, um, and her social media pages didn't mention her employer. She was fired for violating the, the company's social media policy, which said no lewd or obscene things on social media. She explained and complained to her employer that so another employee was not fired for calling someone a, quote, fucking libtard asshole <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> I believe that's the direct quote in here. Yeah, here it is. Fucking libtard asshole. Uh, about flipping Trump off, Briskman said, quote, he was passing by and my blood just started to boil. I'm thinking DACA recipients are getting kicked out. Okay. Uh, he, he pulled ads for open enrollment in Obamacare. Only one third of Puerto Rico has power. I'm thinking he's just at the damn golf course again. I flipped off the motorcade a number of times. <laughs> Okay. She was, uh, so she was fired. She now says she plans to work for a new job with an advocacy group. She believes in like planned parenthood or PETA. Ugh. If you are at all worried about her, as I'm sure a lot of our audience is don't because she now has 
uh, at least $56,000 more in her bank account on behalf of people supporting her GoFundMe. What? So she's got, you know, at least a, a year's salary. Her GoFundMe for what? For getting fired. Thank you, Julie Briskman, is what the GoFundMe is called. I should have set that shit up. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be great to get fired, yeah, for social media violation and then just get a $60,000 severance? I'd take that deal. That's fine. That sounds awesome. So uh, what do I think of this? Uh, it doesn't appear that there's any evidence, at least not that I've seen, that anyone bullied or pressured her employer to fire her. This was their own independent decision of like, yeah, this chick's crazy. She posted some stupid crap. Let's get rid of her. To that extent, I don't have a problem with it. But all of a sudden, a lot of the people in the Huffington Post comment section are, are waking up to this idea of, oh. huh, maybe people shouldn't be punished in their professional or academic lives based on opinions they have and speech they have outside of that workplace. Maybe that's a great idea. So maybe if you if that is your sentiment upon seeing Miss Brisk Miss Briskman, resist the urge to go bullying or pressuring someone's employer next time they say something you don't like on social media. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I think in a perfect world we could all continue to work wherever we're working, no matter what personal beliefs we hold, even if they're extreme. Sure. I mean, if that's the arrangement you and your employer have, uh, I, I all I'm doing is deferring to the employer to the extent that they weren't pressured. If if that's their decision, yeah, that's their yeah. decision. I don't I don't know that I like that though. I mean, even if it wasn't, so I've I've only worked in at in at will states, and so even if uh you don't make the connection that that's why you're being fired, you will get get fired. Like in Seattle, basically any job that I have, if they saw any one of my videos, they would could fire me without cause mm -hmm. for it. I mean, yeah, but is there are there terms that you agreed to as part of your employ employment not to do that? And no, in this case, but, there but, were. Yeah, but but there are terms saying that you can get fired any time for any reason or no reason at all. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Just in a perfect world, I wish we could all express our political yeah. opinions no if matter it, how extreme and still continue to work if in the it, public realm. If I were her boss, I, I mean, if she had a perfectly clean record outside of everything besides this and was an asset to the company... I don't think I would fire a person over this, but yeah. the point, you know, point in this is in this case, I'm not the boss. I defer to the boss's decision. I just don't want people going to the boss and saying, have you seen how rude she was to our president? You should fire her. Well, yeah, let them decide. Yet she was ready with that other employee to throw them right under the bus. Oh yeah. You know that she went through and, you know, did a bunch of research to try to throw other people uh, you know, do a whole bunch of what about ism. This person did that. This person did this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm mostly, uh, I, I can understand why she doesn't like the end of the deal that she got. And I too would not like to be penalized in my workplace for speech that I said outside of it. I think that's fair. I think that's yep. a fair grievance. Um, but you know, <laughs> that's, that's the risk you take when you do it too. And that's also, Hey, that's one of the reasons I quit proactively because I, I could foresee one of these situations. Yeah, we were going to get fired <laughs> and we really were. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, she'll be fine. I mean, it sounds like she wants to work for some advocacy group and she got a fat check out of the deal. So yeah. all things considered, I don't think she's going to be in any trouble. She'd only been working at this place for six months. And if, if the good that comes out of this is a bunch of people thinking about what their stance is on free speech in the workplace, and what your role as an uninvolved third party is, which in my opinion should be nothing, um, then that's great. Then, then everybody kind of has a, some form of win in this case. If You're that's still right. holding out for that leftist self-awareness to come. Yeah, I know, I know. You should probably <laughs> stop waiting. It's not gonna happen. I know, happen. I, have, I have a dream. I Aww. need to rewrite Martin Luther King's speech about that. <laughs> yeah, really. I rewrite it uh, to fit that theme. <laughs> Okay, we'll do this real. We'll, we'll do this last story, and then we'll hop into super chat and call it a night. This is a, it's just a bizarre story, a viral video that was circulating this week that um, it's just it's just fun to watch. So um, there's actually little known about this case. We don't actually know, at least that I've seen, unless there's breaking news, who this woman is, or what Taco Bell this happened at, or what this woman's condition was. Presumably, some sort of substance is involved, but you be the judge she entered a taco bell and demanded french fries that's this that's basically the premise here at one point she accuses taco bell of being racist because they won't serve her french fries that they don't have so here's what she had to say okay i guess literally want uh, a meal 
we need french fries and from the french menu. fries? Yes, french fries. <laughs> we don't sell french fries. You know, your Burger King is also French fries. You think you're in Burger King? This is Taco Bell. See? What's okay, the Taco Bell? Okay, Taco Bell, literally, literally, I've never been able to not get an order in. Oh, sorry. Welcome to Taco Bell. We are here today. Tell me what french fry orders you have. We don't have french fries. We sell no, not french fries. Anything along the side of the Anything that's helpful, just tell me. She's just drunk. You don't stop in front of this stuff. I'm not asking you to find something. I'm literally asking you. Tell me what you guys. That's the menu. Go ahead. Read the menu. You want to be in like this scene? Okay. 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 Okay.
Tim Copeland. Oh, thank you, Vets, for my freedom, he said. I don't know if yep. that person served. Well, thank you, Vets. <laughs> and you, yep. if you served, I don't know. But thank you for thanking the Vets. Tim Copeland, absolutely love you guys' <laughs> content. This show is my favorite thing to listen to early Monday morning at work, but just well, want to drop in and say thanks. Thank you so much, Tim. Your plain friend said, thank you for your work. Enjoying the show as always. Hope you all have a good night. Thank you. Well, thanks. Um, Offset Spaz said, man acquitted of murder and 13 stabs two at Mall of America today. When did this happen? Oh, man, Probably I didn't even hear about during that. During the show. Yeah, I think oh, this- Oh, no, acquitted. So uh, this was a no, previous- No, no, acquitted in 2013. Stabs two at Mall of America today. And oh, I saw some other people in okay. live chat mentioning this. So I actually- Yeah, I haven't even seen it. Wow. Started to go down a few hours ago. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys. We When something happens, when we're on the stream, we can't, we can't cover it. Well, really and we details. spend so much time like before we go live in the stories that we're going to cover that yeah. we kind of aren't in the news cycle presently. Exactly. Uh, Scott Allen said, the cadets are at the academies- um, are members of the military and subject. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. Gotcha. So there's clarification there. So they yep. would be court martialed. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Scott. That that makes sense actually. Violating uh, anything. Brian Doing Gaston any kind of said, Rob Lowe, Woody Allen, Rome Polanski, et cetera. Congrats on having your scandals come out pre social justice revolution. Your careers are safe. I don't know that I really care about the Rob Lowe one either because those I don't girls even were remember 16 it. and 17. He made a sex tape where he had a threesome with two 16 year olds. Oh boy. But this was in the, it was before his career, like got really big. Yeah, yeah. Still, that's on the list. Sixteen is like that's things the kind of not age. to record. Yeah, but you know, how old was another, he too? Is the question. I think he was in his twenties, but um, mm. these aren't. I don't want to treat him like that's not the same category as Roman Polanski, who dosed a thirteen-year-old with quaaludes and then sodomized oh boy. her. Yeah. Oh boy, I don't even remember these. They're so long ago. I can't remember who did what. And then Woody Allen married his stepdaughter. Hmm. Um, who he raised from being like a pretty young child. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Redicus said to Kai went full Clinton. Yeah, that was hard to listen to. Really evasive. He's like, how am I going to get out of, why would you go on Howard Stern if you knew you had a sexual assault under your belt and everybody's getting accused of sexual assault? Like, why did he even go on Howard Stern? Well, that's Stern? the thing is I don't understand how he, I don't understand the thinking exactly. It, it, if someone asked you, if someone asked me, Hey Matt, have you ever uh, like sexually harassed or assaulted a person? And I was on a broad public platform. And I knew that it was never going to be proven if I had done this. I'm not an advocate of lying, but I don't see the benefit of implying that you did anything in that scenario. Why would he do that? Why wouldn't he just be like, no, I've never done that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe because he knew something like this was going to come out, but then why would he know. deny it categorically? Yeah, it also seems, yeah, you're right. He denies the allegations, but then he go. but previously he goes on there and basically says, yeah, I basically coerced people into, into sex. Oh boy. Woo. <laughs> Uh, first name said, maybe the feud between George Chakai and William Shatner has more homosexual origin than we were told. <laughs> Yikes. I've never gotten a gay vibe from William Shatner, though. He's straight, right? Oh, I don't know. You're the Trekkie. Uh, I am not a TOS. I'm a TNG. How many Sorry. times do I have to tell you? <sighs> yeah, I'm not a Trekkie, and that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know what you're Original talking about. Original series versus the next generation. You're... <sighs> You're a worthless guy. All right. Skittles <laughs> mixed dabby pants. That's funny. Um, oh, but, sorry, sorry. Never mind. I was supposed to skip that one. Aaron Floyd said, Dear Blonde, please stop saying problematic. Thank you. I will not, but it's thank you for It's a problematic your term. We really should yeah. eliminate it from our vocabulary, like all the I, other problematic terms. Yeah, really. Thanks for yeah. the donation, but I'm going to continue saying whatever the fuck I want all the time. I'll, I'll stick up. I, I don't like that word either, but I'm also not going to tell you you can't. Because it's, it's, it's co-opted by feminists and social justice warriors, and it's just- What? Because they co-opted one of our terms, I have to stop using it? No way. Okay. That's problematic. Yeah. Redica yes. said, sexual harassment is civil, so treated as such. Rape and sexual assault is criminal, so treated as such. Okay, maybe that's a fair distinction. Maybe, I think, so you were making a distinction earlier about the crimes or transgressions yeah. you care about. So maybe we apply yeah, a different standard. I care about whether or not it was a crime. Okay, and then and because we care about that distinction, maybe we apply a different level of scrutiny or a different level of skepticism to the allegations. If the level of proof is necessary to for me to believe crime or the, the burden of proof is going to be higher if it's necessary for me to believe you know general uh, non-criminal but still bad behavior thing right the we can lower our our standard of uh, scrutiny a little bit i think maybe that's fair and my standard for morality is going to be markedly higher for a politician than it is going to be for somebody like louis ck that's a comedian like hmm. my opinion of him knowing that he's kind of a pervert changes basically none i already knew that but in a political sense, this would be disastrous. I would never trust a candidate that did something like that ever again. Hmm. So there's also a distinction to be made in what they do. Um, 
let's see. That was a good comment, Redicus. Uh, Gouda said, I should be asleep, but I love your show so much. And to the rapper trying to sell shit in the chat, please leave and take your cringe with you. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. I didn't even Where's notice Jay? That. Is Jay Fry not hanging out tonight? Jay, Jay Fry only does caps locks. So he allows solicitation, but no case. caps. <laughs> Just don't try to sell your album in caps. Yeah. That's yeah. all we ask. <laughs> yeah, really. Josh D. Marshall, checked out the live stream early. Internet is on the fritz. See you guys next week. Sorry, Josh. Right, thanks, man. Uh, Dangerous it. Spaces said, Trump was basically bragging about groupies. Gross as that may be, how can Mar compare that to some acute, yeah, to uh, someone accusing a person of sexual assault? And the way that he phrased it made it sound like Trump was a rapist that we should have sent to jail, but we elected him anyway, despite yeah. being a rapist. Like, that is an insane accusation. Bill um, Maher's feud with Trump is very personal. And he, I mean, Bill Maher's case of Trump derangement syndrome is one of the most severe and the saddest that I've observed. <laughs> we need to start a charity for his treatment. Whatever, I think. <laughs> God. He's useless on everything except for Islam. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't watched his show. To be honest, remember when we covered, um, when he hosted Ice Cube and Simone Sanders oh, yeah. to yeah, flog yeah. him at the altar of social justice because he used the N word in a joke. Oh, I forgot about That's that. basically when I stopped watching his show because I just, I lost respect for everything. You invited people to come onto your show and tell you what words you can't use on the basis of the color of their skin. You allowed yourself to be bossed around. Yeah, it's the people of color apology tour. Everybody yeah, has to do it, it after it, saying a racial slur. It really, I, I, it, he kind of lost me at that point. And kiss Jesse Jackson's ass. That's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, Redicus said, you think these commies have principles, property rights, or social media lynch mobs? <laughs> yeah. Um, Mosin Ross said, man, it would, would, it would have been epic if Trump would have shot her with a paintball gun as she was flipping him off. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. Uh, Scott Allen says she was working for a government contractor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Doing what she did had the potential to hurt their business. They were right to fire her. Yep, I, I'm fine with that. I, I can see that argument. I can see the employer's perspective. Absolutely. Um, Redica said, is she related to Shia LaBeouf? Who? Uh, um, oh, probably, um, probably the, the, the French fry girl at Taco Bell. That was a very oh, LaBeoufian outburst. Was, yeah. Man, I always feel bad for people. To like Shia LaBeouf at the uh, police station saying like accusing cops of being racial traitors. Well, no, he was being... at a fast food restaurant too, where he was like, I want oh, French yeah. fries. It, yeah. It was at a bar too. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Yeah. They're like, we only serve liquor, dude, and they kick him out. Yeah, I'm just trying to get some French fries, and this guy hits me with a Grey Goose bottle in the head. I forgot about that one. You guys are one. racist. <laughs> yeah. forgot about that one. That was a good one. I forgot one. about that. Thanks yeah. for the reminder, Redicus. Uh, Frank Underwood said, the reason black people don't dream anymore is that the one that had a dream got shot. Ruh, ro, you guys are a bummer. Jeez. Uh, Dangerous Spaces said, I think she lives with challenged people. She may be one day on release if she thinks this is racist. KKKFC will melt her brain. <laughs> They even have fries. Thank you, Dangerous Spaces. KKKFC. That's a good one. Uh, Lala said, in my first year at college uh, and realized my friend group is a cesspit of feminists, what should I do? I'm thinking oh, of no. doing a bit on it. Um, get new friends, but bang all the feminists. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen to Blonde on these things. <laughs> I defer. Yeah, get new I'll, friends. Also study hard. College. That's... That's that was my you know I I was on this straight and narrow study hard campaign in college which worked out fine in the end but I uh, you know there's certain elements of social life that I wish I would have uh, partaken in more frequently and I I would defer to Blonde's advice. <laughs> No. Yeah, I mean, I think that you would say this too, but like if you could go back and, and give your college self advice, and this is the advice I would give to college age men is like, just start taking the lead in every relationship. And if yeah. bitches don't like it, just let them fall to the wayside. Yes. Don't yep. focus on any one chick. Don't get really invested. Don't have one itis. Don't pedestalize the golden vagina. Don't do any of that. Yep, I agree. Um, and then last one for the night is Marbo93. Punishment for fake hate crimes should be the alleged crime be enacted in real life to these assholes. So we all get to vandalize this car. Yes. We all get to actually spray paint, date your own kind, and die. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Those are all very No, actually, fun. actually, I if I got a chance to vandalize this car, I would, I would spray paint things like, I literally do not care who you date like down yeah. the side of his car date it is whoever not of, you want and live it is not of any concern to me who you take to the movies on friday night i would write yeah. something like that because that's <laughs> that's that's my real stance oh my god oh boy. all right what a well weird show. <laughs> yeah what are we yeah, i was i was thinking this week like, there's a bunch of weird topics but uh, we'll get through it i don't know it's sometimes sometimes every week it's like this is the obvious thing to talk about and sometimes it's like I don't know. There's not a These lot going on. These 50 tiny topics are the obvious topics. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, thank you to our live viewers and our live chatters, especially our super chatters. Uh, keeping the show going, everybody else keeping us honest, feeding us facts while we try to maintain sincerity on the old duct tape production. If you are listening on YouTube or in an audio platform on demand later, thank you kindly as well for supporting the show. Remember, there is more material, including the call-in show, Wednesday's call-in show. If you want to listen back to it, you'll find that on the audio platforms. You can check those out. iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, all of them, wherever you listen to your stuff on your phone, you can find us. They're all linked conveniently in the description for you. And you can email us. It's beauty in the beta at gmail.com. We will be back next Sunday unless we're arrested for, I don't know, sexual harassment charge, sexual assault charges or something. In the meantime. <laughs> I'm going to swat your house. Because if it's Sunday, sorry, Chuck Todd, it's not beauty in the, it's not meet the press. It's our show. It's beauty in the beta. We'll, we'll see you next time on Sunday, I think. <laughs>